<laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of The Link Up with myself, Charlene Smith. I'd like to introduce my two special guests today. We've got Ross Embleton. Thanks for having me. Round of applause. <laughs> Thanks for coming. And we've got Sir Tai Wo. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. I know about, I know about the Sir. I think, I think Sir Lucky, but thank you very much for um, having me and inviting me. As well, always, it's a pleasure, Ty. And thank I'd like to give much. a big shout out to sure. Yam Man Products who have provided us with some snacks and drinks. As you can see, Ty has tucked right into the uh, pineapple cake. So these very are nice, imports nice. <laughs> from Jamaica and they specialize yeah. in um, distributing it worldwide. So if you guys want to check them out, the link is in the description below. They're providing me with a little hamper as well. I've got some um, mm. Irish, moss, Irish moss, some Moringa tea, but I know they do Dutch pots, fresh fruit, veg, porridge, everything from Macayard. <laughs> <laughs> so go and check them out. <laughs> So, how are you guys? <laughs> yeah, fine, thanks. How are you? You feeling nice and sweet after that pineapple cake? Yeah, I, I think a bit too sweet. But I think <laughs> my stomach is a bit... Didn't come up for air, did he? <laughs> oh, no, literally. <laughs> it, that looked like it could have fed all three of us as well, Ty. We, won't, we never know, will we? We never know, it's gone. <laughs> you yeah. didn't even offer Ross none. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't. I'm sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't offer any. I'm, I'm so, so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> I'm do you sorry, know what? I do, I do, I do apologise. Two things you can guarantee on this show coming from Ty. <laughs> Go on. He will indulge in the snacks and he'll be able to name some songs. Am I right or am I wrong? <laughs> you are absolutely right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You're absolutely <laughs> right, Shani. In Shut fact, up. I'm going to think that. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know if a song has been mentioned. I'm surprised there ain't one for you. You're absolutely right, Charlene. <laughs> Nothing called you right? Uh, I'm trying to think. Right, whilst no, I was no, thinking no. about that, <laughs> shout out to everyone in the comments who are joining us. It's yeah, always great to have you guys support in. Absolutely. Uh, apologies, there wasn't a show last week. Um, there was a last minute cancellation. So, you know, there's no show, but we are back this week. There's a, there's, there's a song. Oh, there you go. The show, Dougie Fresh and the Get Fresh Crew. That, go and sing it. I've never heard of it. <laughs> uh, I can't really sing it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to talk. Six minutes, six minutes, six minutes, Dougie Fresh, you're on. <laughs> That's how it goes. That's how it goes. Because I can't, I can't. Featuring, featuring Slick Rick, who, who originally is from London, then he went to America. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. Did yeah. I know that? I don't think I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, Dougie, yeah, Dougie Fresh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the show, yeah, fantastic hip hop, old school lecture. I don't know. Do you know anything about old school? Not enough. Hip -hop? No, not enough. Not <laughs> enough to know what Electric. you know anyway. <laughs> well, so I can definitely teach you, Ross. <laughs> what's, what's, what's your era then? Music era then. Ross. Probably back end of the nineties, really. I, I've got like the weirdest. They'll tell you the, the weirdest oh, name, playlist you don't, can don't, ever come name, across. Name, like, name, some, name some groups. I, my, no, I could have like I'd have like I could have Marvin Gaye. You know, I'd have Marvin Gaye. That's straight on my playlist. That's not. That's There's not, a proper that's proper not variation. Weird. Um, heard it for the great fun. You know, that's not weird at all. That's not weird. Mind no, 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 I don't mean weird in terms of the songs. There oh, must mean... be songs I choose. I'm talking about if I stuck a playlist oh, on, you mean... it would be the variation oh, of yeah, yeah, just yeah, absolutely yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, but listen, music is music, isn't it? Mix so it we always like preference, like, isn't it? You know, your preference. you know, and I can't believe I know so much about music from Marvin Gaye to S Club 7. <laughs> S Club, there ain't no, no part like, like an S Club gonna show you how. Everybody get down tonight. For your hands in the air. A uh, few comments. You know uh, people's really loving your attire, Ty. Oh, thank you very much. I did thank say I really much. liked it as well, representing Nigeria. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. It's um, our women, Nigerian women, lost in the inaugural Bihari Cup to South African women 4 2. Oh. Which was a bit disappointing. So that's that's out of respect. Okay. Out of respect to them. Big up to the Nigerian ladies. Yeah, big up to the super. No, I nearly forgot their name. Super <laughs> Falcons. Oh, Super Falcons. Yeah, because the men are Super Eagles, and the, and the women are Super Falcons. Okay. So yeah. So Ross, you're actually an English football coach. You're also a former player. Yeah, loosely. Not I wouldn't use that term playing oh, in, in too much, to be honest. There's, okay. a, there's not much of a playing history there for me, to be honest. And, and to be that's a big part of um I suppose why I'm quite so, quite proud of my coaching career. So I ain't got that as a background. Do you know what I mean? I played mm -hmm. like most people as a kid or whatever, but 
once I got to sort of 19, 20, that stopped and I got concentrated on my coaching. Um, one, because I weren't good enough. And secondly, because coaching was was a bit more of a passion, to be honest. So okay. we'll hang on to the football playing bit a little bit. <laughs> is what, we all, what we all love, I'm not sure where we start. But but the coaching's really the main thing that, that, you know, that, I've, that I've been into since I was a kid, really. Yeah, and you sort of kick-started your career at Leighton Orient. And you've had a, quite a few spells there as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, talk us through your journey there. Yeah, it started as a kid, to be honest, season ticket holder, like mascot, all the things oh, that come wow. with, with following That's the club. Do you know what I mean? Living in living in East London, we grew up in Walthamstow, so not far from the ground. Um, me, me dad, my granddad, my family all had all been going over the Orient forever. And then once I went to secondary school, I had a season ticket with my mates and thought I was a little hooligan and tried to <laughs> go and have a sing song on a Saturday afternoon, that sort of thing. And then um, I played for the club. As a from 11 to sort of 15, 16, and, and I got released then. So I went straight into coaching. Okay. Um, and I coached there, coaching the football and the community program all around here where we are now, really local primary schools, a lot of the hours in the states around here, places that I know well because I was going into them areas and coaching from from a young age. So um, obviously, the, the further into my career I've got, I've spent a lot more time in academies and stuff like that. But the real basis of me learning to become a coach was in and around the areas that we are now. And I've, I've always been passionate about this area, even though I don't live here no more. Mm. Laying Orient always had a big place in my heart. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah, and like I say, yeah. the, the surrounding community was was massive for my upbringing as a coach. But I spent about 10, 11 years, maybe a bit longer coaching within the club. And within that, I, I spent time coaching with the youth team. I managed the club, what is the academy now, the club centre of excellence at the time. Uh, quite a young age, 25, 26. So very lucky to have progressed through the club like that. And yeah. then I went off and, and found my way at other places and learned a little bit more. So I spent some time at Tottenham in the academy, AFC Bournemouth, uh, Norwich. Uh, and then I went back to Spurs for a little while before I went, then went into first team football, which was uh, Swindon Town was my first opportunity in uh, in first team football. And then back to the Orient. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, bit of a roller coaster ride where obviously I ended up as manager. So um probably not too many people that can tell that story in terms exactly. of being the mascot and having a picture to show for it right. and then standing on the touchline picking the team and managing the club for um for, for a good period of time was surreal really absolutely i mean especially um as your you know footballing career didn't quite work out and to have the career that you have been on is absolutely amazing it was quite close as well with Justin um, yeah. Edinburgh. Oh, rest his soul. Um, yeah, Rusty So. I mean, what impact did he sort of have on your life? Well, I mean, they're not, you won't be able to see him obviously behind the camera, but my kids are in there. I mean, if you spoke to them, they'd tell you what, what an impact he had on everybody at Leighton Orient. He'd come yeah. in and we never knew each other. We were thrown together. Uh, I was a coach at the time with the first team. Previous manager had been sacked. Justin was appointed. We'd only ever met each other once or twice on the touchline. So we had no existing relationship. We just hit the ground running. We just clicked straight away. We got on great. He was a proper man. The best way I've always described him since since he passed was he was just a proper geezer. Oh. Like he, he 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 embraced himself with everyone, supporters, staff, people's families. Just brought the club together immensely. And obviously, being in that mm -hmm. and around that and being with him every day, we built up an incredible relationship. On top of that, as well, we had success. We won the league. We got promoted. We got the club back from. The dark times to to where it is now um so to experience that and then lose him was like nothing i've ever experienced before yeah. if i'm honest yeah. um, we all lose people we all know how it feels but it was like an 18 month whirlwind Aww. do you know what i mean it's like coming he come into the club like tasmanian devil turned all our lives upside yeah. down we had such a great time and then like that he was gone so yeah. um painful for us but even more painful for his family but yeah, yeah he, he would he's left a mark on on, on me as a person as a mm. coach and and i like, say as my family as well yeah and he was uh he was a great great man so sorely missed um but yeah. i think the great thing with him is, is is he'll always be remembered his legacy lives on is Massively. there a statue that's sort of well crazy. the club named the state the not the stadium the main stand after him yeah so um it was something that sort of took a little bit of time of covid etc to, to take shape um but fortunately before covid actually happened they announced that his name, the, the step, that stand, main stand, would be would be named after him. So his name's on the on the front of it now, and there's memorabilia up as you go through it. So yeah, um, rightly so. Do you know what I mean? Fantastic. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure after for his family, still if they still go to the games, that that they can go to somewhere that you know that you 
be close to them, but they know was was close to him, and and he achieved success. So yeah, a, a lovely thing for everyone. Yeah, absolutely. You also had Yaya um, Torre uh, training as well. What was that like? Ah, it was magic. Do you know what? It was really strange. I got an email um, from on LinkedIn from a, an agent saying to me, my client's looking for some training. You can imagine how many of them I get. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> so Endless I always try to reply to them just to be polite. Do you know what mm. I mean? Even if it was, no, no, sorry, there's nothing here for you. But this guy come back and said to me, I think you might um, – might want to just give him a little bit of an opportunity and i was like yeah. oh. and you know what respected it even more because he didn't come at me all guns blazing yeah i've got yaya too yeah yeah, yeah. 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 done it the right way so okay yeah what do i need to know and he said well, my client doesn't play no more but he wants somewhere to keep fit he's doing his coaching qualifications would you be interested in having him in so when you okay who is it yeah said, yeah, yeah, tour race. Right. So Imagine that. Straight away, straight <laughs> away, I think it's a wind up. Straight yeah, away. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, all oh, right, yeah. So who's going to walk in the training? Exactly. So I, had to, so I kept it bubbling along for about three or four days. And then I had to tell the hierarchy at the club because yeah. it, it was during COVID. Uh -huh. So I obviously had to go for all them tests, et cetera, to allow him to come in in the first place. Yeah. But then at the same time, you want to make the most of the fact Yaya yeah, yeah, Toure is coming training. Yeah, exactly. You know I mean? <laughs> he was going to be in an Orient kit. Like when does someone as famous oh, no, as that, that end up in a kit like yeah. Um So yeah, I kept it bubbling along, bubbling along. And then the morning of the training, I'm thinking he's going to pull up. <laughs> the lads are going to go insane. Yeah, you yeah. weren't allowed in the change rooms. They're all sitting outside under shelter in the car park or like around the car park. So as soon as he gets out of the car, they're going to know who he is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he gets out and I can see them all looking like, who is he? Like, you can see them all nudging each other. It's a trialist turn up. No one can work out who he is. He's yeah. got a mask and a baseball cap on. So they still don't know who okay. he is. Yeah. So he comes in and he high fives me like, like he's met me yesterday. Yeah. Because we've been talking on the phone. And yeah, that. yeah. yeah. Um, and then showed him around the training ground and whatever. And as I walk him through, we had a French lad who was playing for us, like uh, African, like French, African. And he's yeah. come out of the gym. And as he's walked out, you can see in his face, like, I know that's Yaya Toure, but yeah. what's Yaya Toure <laughs> yeah. doing at Leighton Orient? Um, and then about 10 minutes later, he's on the bike warming up and there's like three or four of the young pros, like 18 years old, sitting on the bike next to him, getting prepared for training. It was so surreal. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So surreal. But he was absolutely different class, like a bit yeah. out of shape. But yeah. he come in, done it all properly. When it was too much or too heavy for him, he dropped out. Um, he'd done everything that we asked of him. And then the great thing was that if there was ever anything that I was doing in training, there was this real surreal moment that I was talking to the lads about something we'd just done based around the next game that we were going to be playing. And he stopped me and he went, boss, boss, like that. So I've looked yeah. around and I've gone, to, <laughs> I've gone to my assistant. Do you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> he went, what? I went, yeah, you're a tour. I just called me boss. Uh, and he went, he, went, he, 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 said, uh, wow. he said, do you mind if I say something? So I was like, oh, I'll take what you want. And he yeah. went, no, no, he said, uh, when we do this drill with um, with Pep, we, we did, and I'm like, oh, like you could see <laughs> the boys amazing. going. It's the incredible. references he were making yeah. made such an impact. Yeah. And obviously, from that perspective, brilliant. But the lads used to at ten o'clock every morning. They always get a cup of tea, sit down. They called it yaya -ya time, and they were sitting like a like a D shape around him. And he'd tell them stories oh, about him in the city. So about him. He was absolutely, he was brilliant. That's he did this for a couple of weeks. Yeah, and then. Um, and then he, he started to look elsewhere at what he was going to do next. But when he left, he sent all cakes in. And he was Aww. a proper man, oh, wow. proper behaviour. Unbelievable to have him training him. Yeah. And the exposure it gave the club, etc. Oh, that's amazing. Fantastic. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, inspiration for the young kids as Everyone, well, you know, yeah. that are coming up. And to hear those stories, it just makes it a bit more real for them. Gives yeah. them more motivation yeah, to fantastic. keep going as well. That's incredible. That's that amazing. Is. And it, it, I don't think it was until he turned up that we realised really, like, you watch him on the telly, yeah. see all the things he's done. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're sitting there and you're going, hang on, this guy is probably the best African footballer yeah. ever, or yeah. arguably, yeah. Yeah. in that category. Yeah, yeah so exactly. It, like, it didn't register. Like, yeah. how much of a major thing he was, do you know? What I mean? And you guys it's, sitting there having a cup of tea and a chat a cup with of tea him. asking him about Mancini. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That man. is quality. Yeah, uh, big up to everyone in the Fantastic chat. We've got story. Kalechi Brilliant. saying, hey, Empress Charlene and Ty. Hey, don't forget uh, Ross. Don't forget Ross. I was going to say, don't forget Ross. Uh, Jay Warren is hello, saying, hello. madness. Uh, madness? This, what is that? As yeah, in, uh, Yaya Torre. Oh, I thought he meant the group. Yeah, I did. Oh, oh what? Well, <laughs> 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 Driving in my car. <laughs> 
uh, why and not uh, quite a long username saying yeah 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 Tore. <laughs> Jay Warren saying what a guy um, yeah absolutely what a guy yeah wow big up what Dougie Fresh Dougie Fresh <laughs> is that another yeah. song no no that's that's the artist that did the show okay yeah oh that is so that's amazing what was your time mm. like at um Tottenham Hotspurs um academy as well Ross it was good it was um it was different to where it is now because obviously they've got like the new stadium and the, the training yeah. complex that goes with it, which I think you know are up there with, with most across the world now. I mean, the yeah, yeah, yeah. probably one of the leading ones, isn't it? But the training ground, yeah. a very impressive place. But we were in a bit of a transition. They were, they knew they were moving out, but it weren't built. Yeah. So we were working the academy towards that. So we were sort of a bit scattered here, there, and everywhere with the facilities that we're using. Probably wasn't really Premier League at the time mm. in terms of or top quality that we were trying to do. The coaching was fantastic, but. The, um, the facilities in that were obviously working towards becoming what they are now. Um, but it was brilliant. And the reason I, I left Orient to go there was I was in a position where I felt like I was only ever learning off myself. I was going in every day and there were so few of us mm. at the club that it, it, I felt like I was I needed a new challenge, do you know what I mean? A new a new new thing to, to freshen things up. And I was lucky enough to get the get the opportunity to go to Tottenham. And I worked with some brilliant people, people like Alex, probably not household names to people, Within football, but Alex Inglefoot was now like head of football at, oh, yeah, at, at Liverpool. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chris Ramsey, who was my coach at Leighton Orient, worked with him at Spurs. He's now a real, real big player at uh, head of coaching at QPR. Yeah, John I don't know. Uh, Chris Chris like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Chris is the main know. man. Uh, he's, yeah. he's top man. Yeah. Um, but John McDermott was now like you know, head of the FA in okay. terms of the, the, the coaching and that yeah. sort of thing. So some unbelievable people to yeah. uh, to work with and learn from. So it was a great experience. And like like, like anyone now, when, once you come away from people in a place like that, there's so many things that you learn that, you, that yeah. you're constantly referring back to, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And just your time at like Bournemouth and Norwich, how does yeah. that compare? Because obviously Norwich is a completely different area, you know, yeah. to working in London. Well, both of them were, to be fair. You yeah. Know, like I got the, the call to, to go down to, to chat to Bournemouth while I was working at Tottenham. And um, brilliant. Went down there, had me interview, got the job. And just went down with not, not really understanding or thinking too much about what the kids were going to be like. Mm. And I got down there and it was brilliant, really great. I loved it. But the edge or the edginess of kids that I just took for granted, yeah. working at Leighton Orient, working at, like, you know, like, like I to refer back to working like on housing estates in primary schools in East London. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I'm walking down and it's nice. Uh-huh. And the edge wasn't yeah. quite there with some of the lads, you know, yeah. some proper players, some good players have played Premier League football. So they were always going to get there. They were always going to have that quality to get to that level. But yeah. it was really surreal getting used to the fact of like that rough and tumble edginess that, mm-hmm. that kids are just naturally you got yeah the people that yeah. we all know growing up with and yeah and around they just add it they just have that thing and all of a sudden it was a little bit like right are we gonna teach these kids this how are we gonna yeah. create yeah. the <laughs> environment to make them have a little bit more of an edge about yeah. them mm-hmm. um, and i think you're saying you can learn but it was mad that was the biggest thing wow going down to somewhere like that and i'll tell you the other thing as well that was crazy was you'd walk through the town center and people would wear bournemouth shirts on yeah they weren't yes. like Arsenal top. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, is it literally? Just I remember Scorsese. walking through the town centre and a geezer had a tracksuit top on that I wore for work. And my missus went, Oh, do you know him? Yeah. And I was like, No, probably a Bournemouth fan. <laughs> but it was so strange yeah. to, to see that. And Norwich, very similar. Okay. Obviously, a completely different part of the world, but it's a lovely yeah. place. Yeah, very lovely. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Bournemouth and Norwich, lovely. Yeah, yeah. And, and, I, and a lot of the time, I can see why there are places that people, once you finish and you retire, yeah. you would move to Bournemouth, move yeah. to Norwich because they're lovely places to live. Yeah. But one town, one team, everyone focused on that. It was yes. quite surreal to get used to how indulged in it was. Yeah. And for Bournemouth, once I once I've been there a little while, it was apparent that they were going to go from League One to to the Premier League. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I remember what they were doing and how they were doing it. Yeah, with Eddie L coming back, all those sorts of things. Um, but it was just strange to see it growing like that and seeing like, like the little things that, that I've already mentioned in that in that area that were completely different to anything I'd, I'd experienced growing up here. Yeah. What was your little things that you guys used to do to try and get, you know, that edginess out of the players? It was just trying to create a little bit of a rough and tumble environment sometimes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Where certain tackles were allowed or you really, oh. really try to heighten, like, 
competition, mm. um, which the, the boys were used to. It was just trying to make them like drills and sessions where they were making more contact with each other. Yeah. And, you know, letting a few things go here and there and trying to get people to understand that that's all right. And yeah. the great thing about it at the time was when I went down there, they'd been playing in, in like obviously set in regions across the country. They'd always played in the Southwest region. So Bournemouth would play like Yeovil, teams yeah. like that, Cheltenham, them sort of teams. Whereas I'm going down there and we've been playing South End, QPR, Crystal Palace, Charlton, those sorts of, yeah. sorts of games. Unfortunately, we entered the league at under 18 where we were coming back up here. So we were playing like Gillingham, Orient, South End. So that helped as well. Yeah. So the boys yeah. were coming up here and it was like, whoa, well, whoa yeah. I mean, this ain't Yeovil. Do you know what I mean? This ain't <laughs> exactly. Brighton. This ain't, this was, there was a little bit more to it. Yeah. So I think that helps as well, need. as well as trying to create a little bit of an environment for them to, to learn from. Yeah. Oh. Speaking of Norwich as well, I mean, <laughs> how do you think they're going to cope this season in the Premier League? They ain't yet had a win. No, they haven't. <laughs> Why are you, you asked... laughing, Ty? Because <laughs> <laughs> you don't... <laughs> Is that what is that? Is that, is have, that... You, have you got a song and you're scared to say it? What about no, 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 no. Well, there would be a song, but no, I, I could you mean you're what, what, Jay Sean going down, 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 down. No. <laughs> oh, I'm not saying no, that, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't say that, but no, no, I wouldn't say that about Norwich. I wouldn't say that, Norwich. I think basically what it is is that, um, I saw a few Norwich fans before the game and Did they was know? coming up to me and they were singing songs about me. They said, You lot are going down. I said, hey, what, you, You're nobody, you know. And obviously they're not nobodies, but they're nobodies to have a go at us, you know. Yeah. So that's that's what that's what it is. I can, but I hope they I hope, understand. I hope, I, hope, I, hope, I hope. Listen, I hope they stay up, mm. and I hope they do well. But I don't know. They've lost every game so far. Exactly. Even against Watford as well. Yeah, I think it's hard. I, I, it's if, hard. if you it's look hard. at it from both both angles, like you look at Burnley. Yes. And like, like you look at them and you think, well, they don't spend bundles. They invest mm. in they the club. They you know, build the training ground, do up the stadium, all them sorts of things that are wonderful, but. Ultimately, yep. people want to see teams winning on the pitch, don't they? Yeah. I think, like, the great mm -hmm. thing for Norwich is they don't overcommit. Look mm -hmm. at Derby at the minute, like, clubs no, are. They don't. they don't ever put themselves in a position where they're going to be in a bad, or end no. up in a bad way. No. But as a fan, when the season's starting and you're potentially going to get beaten like that, it must be hard yes, to turn is. up every week. And there was someone on the radio the other day talking about one of their games and they were saying, like, there's no atmosphere. And it was almost a little, he said, it feels like people are a little bit like, not really sure where our win's going to come from, and yeah. that must imagine turning up as a player, I know. A fan, a, yeah. exactly. Anyone linked to the club, knowing that it's going to be hard. I respect what they do immensely. I do as well. Exactly. It must be, tough, mustn't it? It must be but I, I just admire, I admire them the way they, they carry on because I mean, they, they there's no um, thought of sacking Daniel Farker. No. Exactly. You he know, so, got to give a lot of credit to you him. know. But like you said, I just don't know where they're going to go. But like you said, Norwich, lovely place, lovely place. You know what I mean? Lovely. Most of the fans. <laughs> they're all right. They're lovely fans. You, you won't get any problem in Norwich unless I won't say what other team. <laughs> unless you're a fan of the other team, you won't get any fan. Oh, in Norwich. That? So, if Swiss Town, if you're in Swiss Town, then maybe. But apart from that, Norwich is lovely. Go up there, really, really nice. You know. So that, that's all. But that's what it was. I was just, yeah, yeah. I was surprised. I mean, I know we're not doing well, but for them to have a go at us, and this was before the game as well. Yeah. You know, it was. You know, yeah, I was. Wait till I was. Is that, well, if they'd won afterwards. I'd still be giving it, but I wouldn't be able to say much, no, you, know? Yeah, you know, so I was a bit disappointed about that. But then maybe that's how far we've fallen, that teams think they can have a pop at us. Because I went into the town in Burnley and they were having a go as well. And I said that, but who are you? They, they were so shocked. They said, do you think that you're going to win? I said, yeah, they were shocked that they thought that I thought we were going to win. You know, and even Wimbledon as well. When we was going to the ground, oh, no, we exactly. to the ground. Yep. And those so, Wimbledon fans. Yeah, I, I didn't hear it. Um, somebody said to Helen, you're going to lose. If I'd heard that, I would say, excuse me. Uh, you was saying something. because No, but I never heard that. It's only, but Helen told me when we were leaving. So I said, oh, okay. I said, I said, you're nobody's. <laughs> <laughs> Ty, no like, way. these nobodies, who do they think they are? I've, I've, I've <laughs> They're nobody. I think what, what I think what I said, Ross, was, I think, I said, <laughs> the best thing we would have known for are the, are the Wombles. And I used to be a big yeah, fan of Wombles. It. When I was four years old, I had a Wombles t-shirt. So, you know, Uncle Bulgaria. Tobamori, Orinoco, it's a love the Wombles. So that's what I, <laughs> that's what I said. <laughs> that's what I said. Yeah, I love I love the Wombles, you know. We got James saying, Ty, if you were to sack one, who would it be, Arteta or Edu? Who do you think needs to go first? Oh gosh, well, I wouldn't sack anybody. So I don't know if I can answer that question. Um, 
I, well, I, I don't, I don't think I can answer that question because I wouldn't want to sack anybody. There you go. That's the question answered. I'm afraid so. I can't. Know. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a, it's a, I, thought, I suppose it's a politician's answer, isn't it? Evading the question, but I, I wouldn't know. No, I'm not. I'm, not I, I'm a bit on the ropes like you as well, Ty. So you know. <laughs> Uh, Ashoka saying big up Ashoka. Ross Embleton. I'm sorry, if you're getting the name. Yeah. Right, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm not correcting you. I'm just, I'm just saying. I wasn't correcting. You, I'm just saying the name. Yeah, big up Ross. Big up Ross. Big but up Ross I have to say though, tonight. I think Ross, you're doing yourself a bit of disservice because what you're saying, even whatever you've done, that's amazing. Because people, I mean, people, I'd even include myself, would love to have got to where you, where you got to. So you know, I think to say that, you know what I mean? That's, I think that's quite. I, I think you're being very humble, which is what I like. I'm very impressed because no, you can't say that you didn't have a career. It just didn't work out. But you actually got to where a lot of boys, and fortunately, I'm glad to say, yeah. girls as well would love to have got to. So I think for, for you getting there is an achievement and a master on its own. So you know. Yeah, I think what happens sometimes is when you mix with people that have cracked it and played and become footballers or any profession, yeah. don't matter really, does it? Yeah, and yeah. You exactly. fall short. You just look upon it as well. Okay, like you sort of put that bit to one side, and I'm fine with it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I've done. All of all of my life, but like yeah. I say, the flip side of that is I've been lucky enough to go and do something else off the back of it. So absolutely, it's given you, it gives you a chance, and then and then it's what you do after that, and rather than letting it hold you back in anything. Hundred percent, totally agree with oh, that. I'm impressed. You must have a lot of stories as well, then, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, 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 yeah, some right, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Only what you're prepared to tell me, which. You know. <laughs> And if you don't want to tell, tell me or Charlie, it's fine, it's fine. And the yeah. audience as well. I, I, think think the, sorry, yeah, audience, I, yeah. I think the great thing that you make brought up here, like there is stories that come from every and uh, from every angle. Do you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. but things like the Yaya tour experience, so things that you That's forget, like, you, you don't forget about them, but they just sort of they just become something that I oh, hope someone brings them up sometimes. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. because then. You don't want to be the one that walks into the pub and goes, like, yeah, let me tell you that one about your yeah, exactly. you're, like, you're trying to do it yourself. Yeah, exactly. Actually, yeah, yeah. When they do come up, people want to hear it. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's an amazing yeah. story. Yeah, it is. It's amazing, Ross. I think you found another profession. If you've got any time. After dinner speaking. Yes. You think? I, I'd love <laughs> to. No, because love people to. would love to hear stories. Yeah. When you come on like that, people would love to hear stories yeah. like that. You know, oh, it's great. I think, I'm, it's amazing. It's 100%. absolutely amazing. As well, Ross, when you sort of compare first team coaching to academy, what is the comparison? Because you've done some first team coaching yeah. at Swindon Town. Yeah, it's um there's a lot you can compare, I think. And I think I think more the more modern day of, of working is becoming a lot more rounded in terms of it ain't just about, I think historically, certainly in this country, it was always about setting up the team to win a game of football at the weekend, which is obviously the priority and still is and will always be mm -hmm. but i think the game's become so rounded now in terms of like sports science analysis coaching yeah. there's so much more to it and there's a constant uh, aim constant theme towards developing players as mm -hmm. well as the team Do you yeah know what i mean yeah. so i think the two have come together a lot a lot more and i've been fortunate enough i suppose in the time that we are now that my coaching with kids and young players that background hopefully you can merge the two together. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah, so I think yeah. there's a lot of comparisons, but I do think at the same time, um, once you're in that uh, in that moment of first team football, when it comes around to a match day, that's when the real, real drastic difference comes into play. Yeah. That I'll always remember uh, my, um, I went to Swindon and I hadn't been there, I hadn't been there long enough to be on, in the dugout for the first game. So we went to Wigan, I sat in the stand and we lost right at the end mm -hmm. um in the next game that i went into we played at home and we won so right you think we were bottom at the time yeah and really thought about the fact that we were bottom yeah you know what i mean yeah, I thought, oh, my God, what an opportunity i've got <laughs> yeah. a job the first yeah, yeah so i went and i was around two people that i was familiar with so the environment and all that was great and then a week later we went to fleetwood and mm -hmm. we got beat five one wow. and i remember sitting in the changing room after the, or like about five minutes to go sitting on the bench thinking Oh my god, what have I done? Yeah, <laughs> what have I done? We're bottom of league one oh and we've god. just been spanked five one. Like, where does it go from here? Yeah, you know I mean? yeah, exactly. And that's when the reality sets in. Mm -hmm. And then obviously the more and more you're in it, the more and more you realise the pressures that come with it. And then obviously when, when you're the manager, there is no way of explaining what it's like yeah. until you've been that bloke. Yeah. 100%. So when you say like about I don't really I don't feel right to say about sacking people. 
Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. People interview you and go, "Hey, oh, yeah, doing well." Right? And you just get rid of him. You think, "Hang on a minute." Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. This is people's lives. This is people's like this. Exactly. Gentleman, he's under pressure at the minute. He is dedicated every minute. Yeah, I was going to say being awake, which is more, more than you sleep yeah, when you're yeah. a manager. Yeah. Uh-huh. Do you know what I mean? The whole thing takes over you, and it don't matter how wealthy you are already. Uh-huh. Yeah, it don't matter what payoff you're going to get and walk off into the distance. All them things help. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And it's a different pressure to what I was going through because you get a sack of laying orange, you still got to go and work in it. Yeah, you know, somewhere along the line. Yeah, but that's when the pressure really starts to tell when you lose mm. a couple of games and you start thinking, "Whoa, hang on." Like yeah, people are screaming and shouting and calling for you to get the sack. That's and the football's so cutthroat That's as well. Difference. And if you're not getting results, then yeah, and and obviously now more and more, it's getting short and short and short. It is. Exactly, hundred percent. And, and I think the other thing is as well, it just never goes away. Yeah, media, yeah, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. It, it, like I know the, the easy quote to throw out is that like years ago, you go down a pub, all have a whinge and a moan about the team, go home, forget it, about yeah. it till uh-huh. Saturday. Yeah, but yeah. now it just don't, does it? Exactly. No, it it's just there forever. Sky Sports News comes on and someone yeah. tweets about it again. So it just it never Retweets. goes away. It's, it's just a constant, constant cycle. So that's the bit that's the, that's the major drastic difference. Yeah. And how do you sort of deal with that pressure? Because obviously Good it's question. pressure from your board and your management. It's pressure from the fans, yeah. pressure from the media. How do you yes. sort of deal with that? It depends on in what context. Drink sometimes helps. <laughs> <else. laughs> Um, What's your favourite drink, red, Ross? Red wine was my Saturday night okay. drink. <laughs> oh, listen, but then the problem is, is you lose a few guys, it becomes your Friday night drink, yeah. and your Thursday night drink as well. Do you know what I mean? Well, um, listen, sorry to interrupt, Rob, but Ross is into the game, red, red wine, new diamond, even though you be 40 did the cover version. New yeah, diamond, red, yeah, red, red wine. Like, <laughs> what? Look at this, this is great. Go on there, Ross, brilliant. But no, brilliant. It was, that, that, that's, the, that's the big thing. And I think, but I think the other thing as well that really helped me was, was family yeah family. like yeah. i get home and we've lost mm-hmm. i'm fuming the whole way i'm in the car or on the coach from an away game but the minute i walk in the door i've got to get up well, sometimes it's late so you get up the next morning take them to school or, yeah or, or get up on a sunday morning and go and do family things that's Takes where you have to yeah, yeah yeah and that's yes. where you because they're the people that matter yeah Absolutely. ultimately you're doing it because you're passionate about your career and passionate about football and all the things that you are yeah. Ultimately, whatever you do, you want to be successful for your family. Yeah. You? So Definitely. I think they're the things that help you try to prioritise. Um, and then then the people around you and the support that you need or want are are the things that help you help you take your mind off it. But yeah, I, I still think now, back to it, if I ever did it again, or you know, one of the biggest things that I should have done more is enjoy the wins. Yeah, enjoy yeah. the wins. And celebrate them. Because you just get consumed straight away when you get defeat. Yeah, or, yeah, but you win and you think, right, we've got to keep hold of this. Yes, we've got to keep on top of it. And then so you wake up the next morning and you're straight back on it again. When actually, sometimes you need to just sit back and enjoy them, yeah, appreciate enjoy that moment. them moments. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And, and uh, not get too high and too low, but at the same time, you've got to try and get back that balance. Yeah, yeah. And I'm glad you've said that, Ross, because um, after our win against Wimbledon the other day, <laughs> people are always like, well, it was Wimbledon, and you know, and it's yeah, like, well, we've yeah, won, okay. we're gonna celebrate we don't care who the opposition was you know we're gonna yeah. celebrate these moments even if they're no we're nobody <laughs> no, just joking. Yeah, no. <laughs> i'm only joke. i'm only joking yeah no absolutely the, the thing is if if we if we had an draw, let's say we'd gone to penalties oh, Lord, they wouldn't have said exactly it's only one with so yeah no it's, that's a good point but i think i think i think what it is is that from as a fan ross would know more as a manager yeah. as a fan what i see is that you learn more from losing than you do yeah, hundred percent. You think about things, that and that's what it is. That's what it is. It's true. But I, I think so. I think so. I think if we're lucky enough to go football now, we should enjoy it more. Yeah, every you moment. Know. When you look back to I like the, the pandemic, of anything. Yeah. Like, I, I always try to refer everything to everything rather yeah. than just football. But I think yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the, the one thing you don't want to do now is slip back into the old habits. Do you? Like, let's enjoy football. Exactly. Football again. Let's enjoy going to the cinema, theatre. Yes, that's right. Because that. we exactly. ain't had it for so for long. A long exactly. Time. Exactly. Let's not let it yeah. become like too normal again. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Because you just don't end up. Don't end up making the making the most of it. Exactly. Enjoy being Wimbledon. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I do. I go all out, mate. I was like, right, who right. the opposition is? Yeah, right. <laughs> very good point. No, very good point. Oh. Very good point. Oh, uh, Amasi is saying big up to Ogar Tai. Is Tai going to hunt? <laughs> Thank you. Big this? up to you as well. Don't forget Charlene and Ross. Yeah, don't forget about. Don't well, forget. Am, am I going to win? 
Ogre to hunt after this. I don't know what that means. <laughs> to, <laughs> to hunt. I don't, I, I don't know what that possi possibly could mean, but no, I'm not. Elaborate, please. Yeah, you, you tell me. If, 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 listen, if it means, am I going home to watch Midnight Call Up? Then yes. <laughs> I'm going home to do to do that. Watch Midnight Caller Triple Bill. I think it is on Forces TV. Obviously, other TV stations are there. That's what I'm going to go and do, and hopefully play Pro Evolution Soccer Manager. There you go. That's Le Ty's uh, Friday night all planned. I don't know what else is. Um, yeah, that's that's it. That's it. So I don't know what hunt, hunting is about at all. So and on the game, Russell. Just yeah, sorry. Yeah, make sure you're in properly. Thank you. So Ross, as well. Just sorry, going back to what you said about you know your five-one defeat. How, what's the um, mood like in the dressing room? Obviously, everyone's down, but how do you sort of pick the players up from such a heavy defeat? I think it depends on the context. At that time, it was for us, it was about trying to shrug it off as quickly as we could because we come in, we won, yeah. and then uh, we lost that one, and then we went on another little run again. So it was trying to put a little bit of perspective on trying to get new ideas across. Um, you know, it ain't, we ain't winning one game, don't repair it all. It sounds a little bit cliche, but it was about at the time about trying to pick everybody up and say, right, well, okay, we've won one, we've lost one. That's what our record reads at the minute. We know where we are in the league. We know what's gone on before, but actually there's nothing we can do about that now. So mm -hmm. try to like dust that one down and put it aside. And fortunately enough, they responded right from that. Yeah. I think a lot of it is context. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? If you've been on a five game winning run, you get beat, you might have the same attitude. If it's been four, four on the, on the spin like losses, there might be tempers, like flying around, there might be so it's mm. a lot of it's about the reaction and the feel that you get, yeah, from the players. Uh -huh. So, once I become the manager, I like to give everyone a little bit of time, so mm. I wouldn't go in the changing room for a good three, four, five minutes, okay, at half time okay. and full time. Well, that's quite interesting, just to try and let everyone take the sting out the moment. Okay. If, there was, if there was, you know, effing and blinding flying around, if there was eye tempers, eye passion, whatever it might have been, to give everyone their chance to throw it all about. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'd like to try and plot a member of staff in there so they could come out and go to me, actually. Yeah. They're all going a little bit mad about this. And it yeah. might help oh, you God. as yeah. you approach it. Do you know what I mean? So a little bit yeah. tactical in the way that you go about it. Um, mm. But then you get the feel off, off of the, the people. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And I think yeah. what sometimes we all forget about is that footballers are people. Yes. You know what I mean? 100%. Before they're anything else, yeah. they are exactly people. Exactly right. <laughs> and, I, and if you can tick the boxes of, of the people, then you've got a chance. Yeah. Yeah, ultimately, they've got to be good at football. But, yeah. but you, 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 if you can get those people working in your direction and yes. getting the best out of them and, and then being happy, mm -hmm. then you've got half a chance. So that was a lot of my rationale behind some of those, was if I, if I, can, if I can tickle the fancy of the people that I'm working with, then, mm -hmm. then you've got a chance of getting a little bit of a response out of them. So yeah. I'd say context was probably the biggest thing, though. Okay, because okay. even when we look at Arteta, obviously we've been on a really poor run. Mm. Uh, a lot of fans coming for Arteta, and we yes, sort of unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> but this is what, like we're saying, this is what I was saying. It's very easy when you're not doing the manager's job. You know, it's very it's easy for to anyone have your to opinion. speak. Exactly, exactly. But you know, I also think when when Ross said, oh, I also, also think sometimes the media they're, they're too much because they will ramp, ramp. Ramp, ramp up the pressure and people should know better would listen and I get criticised for saying I don't want the manager to get sacked and I just laugh I no. laugh because like Ross is saying Ross is, Ross is coming from somebody that's done it exactly you know? you're hearing from a manager mm -hmm. himself who's, who's done, experienced who's it. done it and look what he's saying you know what I mean you know yeah, but I think it's great I, I think it's great I think when you hear Ross speaking it's very humbling yeah definitely to think that you know your family and all that but your family and all that but then you look at that now all these managers men and women have all got family. So if people are slagging them or saying, this manager doesn't know what he or she's doing, they should get the sack. It trickles back to their families. Mm -hmm. And then what then? And, and how do their families interesting, feel? Really interesting because like when I first, when I, I walked into Lanor and I was going back to a club I was passionate about yeah. and I had two or three forms of social media, Instagram, which I've still got and oh, it's right. private and it's, yeah. it's the people that I want yeah, there, only, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't, yeah, I, yeah. I don't, not because I'm being nasty, it's just right. the way I want it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I had a Twitter account. I wasn't really a tweeter, if that's yeah. what I was yeah. supposed to say. Yeah. Um, but I had one. Mm -hmm. And now we were just they were just about to announce me being coming back to Lanor and everyone was feel good because the club had been on its knees. Yeah. And was being picked up again, new owners, etc. And I went straight to the media boy and I went, You ain't put it out yet. And he went, No, 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 I ain't done yet. I went, wait, let me just shut my Twitter account down. Yeah. yeah. He was like, Yeah, oh, no, it's gonna be really positive. Yeah. And I went, Yeah, yeah no. 
I said, but in a minute, sometime yeah. along the line, it ain't. Yeah, yes. exactly. So I don't good want one. I don't yeah. want the good and I don't want the bad. You got yeah. to be cons- you got to be consistent. It's so it. true. Yeah. So that was that was what it was. When I become the manager, I said to all my family, I don't want to know what anyone says on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Don't want to see anything. Don't want you to send me it. Good or bad. Yeah. If someone was turning mm-hmm. me could put a stupid picture up. My brother would screenshot and send yeah. it to me just to give me a bit of stick. Yeah. But other than that, <laughs> right. I didn't want to know. Okay. But my missus would read it. Mm-hmm. My missus oh. would read it. She wow. would say to me, I'm, I'm not going to respond. I'm not going to, but I'm going to be going to the stadium next Saturday to watch the game. I want to know what I'm walking into. I want to know what people's opinions are. I'd be yeah. like, but I don't like that. Things like that just blur people's vision. Yeah. You know I mean? yeah. yeah. Like you're spot on. Wow. Someone somewhere linked to it. My kids are young enough not to, to, to really yeah. suck it all in, but we well, have older children. I tell exactly. have older children, aunties, uncles, brothers, sisters, mum and dad. Someone somewhere is reading it and the offence that it can cause people. Exactly, hundred percent. And it's t- actually sometimes not actually me criticising you that, that it goes in there. It's the people around it. Yeah, yeah. 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 And to hear that, you know, firsthand, I mean. yeah. it just goes to show, you know, how out of control these little comments and remarks can actually yeah. get. Um, and how easy Absolutely. did you sort of find it to block everything out? All right. Yeah. Well, this year, because you know what, I, what I would used to get this one. Right? Ignore the, uh, no, what was it? I know you haven't got social media, but ignore the negative people. And I go, no, you, you're not. Yeah. <laughs> They're basically <laughs> telling you it. that. Uh... You just told me everyone's negative, and <laughs> yeah, you just exactly. told me that I haven't got social media. So the exactly. reason I don't is because I don't care. I don't yeah. care for the good or the bad. I really, really don't. Just because, focus on what you're Yeah, you're in the end, doing. if I, I know that if we win on a Saturday night, I'm a hero. Yes. yes. If we lose, I am the worst person that's ever exactly. walked the to those yeah. fans. Yeah. yeah. So it's fine. And in my mind, I can rationalise that. And I, exactly. whatever they're saying it and how they're doing it, it's fine. But my, my thing was always, don't get personal. Yeah, Absolutely. 100%, personal. which people like to do. Yeah, you know. Don't be personal, it's fine. You can criticise it all day long. Just don't, don't, don't make it personal. Yeah. And that's what I always say. If you say he or she's not good enough, but then, you know, but people love to get personal. Yeah. And I think there's no need for that. But then, as we know, in football, there's always such an exaggeration. That's mm-hmm. what it is. There's always such an exaggeration. But that's what I mean. People love to get personal. And they just take it to a whole nother level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do, they do. But then having said that though, is that something that social media should crack down on? I mean, that's been the talk for some yeah. while. I think I messages. think in general, forget football. I think in general that yeah. should or could be. Even yeah, even uh, even I, in the I wider scale, what, yeah. I, I think society. that's the danger now, isn't it? Yeah. Is that when you took when you look and you see the the people that are successful off of the back of social media, yes. they have to be involved in it. You look yeah. at the Towies, the Love Islanders, the, yes. those sorts of people. Yes, respect to them because they they get their success from the way that they do it. Yeah. yeah, but a lot of it is based around that. So the criticisms are gonna bundle on top of them, and yes. in comparison to mine, because yeah. I don't have to, I don't have to take any notice to it. Yeah, yes. yeah. So I, I, tell, I don't have to take any notice of it. It's no, so true. He makes those clear. examples. Yeah. Um, whereas there's people in the world now that ha- like that is their income. Yeah, life, true, isn't it? Yeah. that they have to go about it in that way and that's when the danger comes up yeah 100 yeah. percent. and yeah. you've definitely got to be like really strong-minded enough yeah. to you know see something and be able to move forward from it yeah. and i think and, strong-minded enough to say do you know what i ain't doing it yeah yeah exactly yeah. I mean, exactly i was listening to a thing on the radio the other day and a guy was saying that he knew someone that was like a radio commentator or a, yeah you know, a presenter on a radio station, yeah. and he actually read the comments while he was, while he's presenting. Yeah, like you are now. yeah. So the con- comments are coming in, and he's going, oh, "He's a crap presenter. He's this, he's that." Yeah. Thinking, How can you possibly do your job? To I that know level? exactly. Yes. That indulged in it because we you know? actually read live comments as yeah. well, like I'm doing right now. You know, even on AFTV and everywhere <laughs> that we are, yeah. and you just have to look past some of the negativity. Well, I don't. Well, I don't do I? Oh yeah, you, you don't do the comments. So, and, well, no, well, I don't know, do the comments. Just... I always answer it. Funny enough, with me, oh yeah, <laughs> people are slagging me off. I always give it, and that's the thing <laughs> because from what I see, on it seems like. Because you're lucky enough, we're all lucky to be here. Yeah. People have got a right to have a go at you. And I say, no, listen, I say, no. If you don't agree with us, fine. But don't have a go at us personally. And they don't like it. I'm always, that's why, like you said, I don't really look. I used to look before when me and Cloud used to have our show, God rest his soul. Mm-hmm. I used to look at the comments before, but now I don't, com- I don't comment. I mean, I don't know when it was. Somebody said to me, oh, yeah, somebody was saying, somebody was saying to me, oh, um, yeah, somebody sent me some silly message on the thing. Oh, what are you talking about? You're so deluded. Look at the comments. I just, I just deleted it. Yeah. Why would, why would I listen to the comments to define me? 
Like you're saying, it's basically what you're yeah, saying. Sure. Was, why would that define me to be who I am? And mm-hmm. what? And these people that don't know you, who are they to slag me off and insult me? If you don't agree, fair enough. But to get personal, it's wrong. So you know, you know. But then I think them. you go one or two ways, don't you? you yeah. my, my preference was to just. It's good. Which I think is good. To do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or yeah. you embrace it. Yeah, you embrace it and you exactly. go right. So you comment. Don't reply to you. Talk, you say something nice about me, and I go, "Oh yeah, thanks very much." Brilliant. Right. Yeah. And you say something nasty about me, and I don't. You've got to go one way or the other. You yeah. embrace it and do it a lot, or back off and leave it alone. Exactly. You, know, you, can't, have, you can't have one without the without the other. Yeah. Like yeah. But I like. But I like that though. I think that's. A, I think that's a good one. Because you know what I mean. Like, why should listen? But now I don't listen. So the so 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 basically they were saying to me, listen to the comments. So they were basically saying. The comments are right. I just laughed. I just laughed. I, I just think laughed. the way, like, they, you know, you have these things now on before programs and after programs. Yeah. You know, if you think of other people and all that, my my thing is, is if you're going to say something on there that you're that you're going to say to my face, exactly. Which they won't. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Which they well, won't. they probably would never say they it. You know, they behind a keyboard, whatever they will type, all these nasty stuff. They wouldn't. Right. But yeah. So why are they allowed to get away with it? Exactly. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It really it's ridiculous. needs but to. But you're right. It's a wider society problem. You are right. Um, Yeah, just going back as well to um, the youth coaching, you know, when we sort of look at English talent, do you feel like there's a lot of it? What are the opportunities like for English talent? I think the opportunities are limited in, in, like, we we, obviously talking about football, but at the top of any industry, opportunities are limited. They talk about the 1%, don't they, in in football? Yeah. I think that's like that if you want to go into the film industry, isn't it? If you want yeah, to like, wherever. The opportunities are different. Yeah. I think in in football, the opportunities are limited. I think we went through a phase in this country where uh, international players started to dominate our league and, and English players' opportunities weren't, weren't quite as yeah. easy to come by. But I think the accountability side of that for, for English players is but some of them weren't good enough. Mm. We didn't have yeah. a pool of players that were good enough to, to contest, which was then why... Everyone was being brought in, and then yeah, any English yeah. player that was any good was another fifteen million on top, which is yeah, probably yeah. Still, still the going rate. Yeah. Um, so I think the opportunities are tough, but I think we've spent the last, I would say, 10, 15 years. The academy environments have become better. The the, the the spending in those areas of clubs, especially at the top clubs, has become a lot, lot more fo- focused, and our players are now reaping the benefits of it. And I think yeah. now we've got a pool of players obviously around the England team and that sort of thing. But I think when you look at the young players that are playing ac- across all four of our professional divisions, the level of quality of football is much, much better. So yeah. therefore opportunities become available a lot, lot more, more to people. Yeah. Cause I was actually interviewing Chris Ramsey as well. And the statistics that he gave me was that the chance of, you know, an English player making it is 0.012 in like wow. 1.5%. So, you know, sort of putting that into numbers, there's 180 contracts in 1.5 million people per year. And there's only like 40,000, I mean, 4,000 footballers, sorry. So that's, that's the mad thing. And that's like, you know, young kids are telling you all the time, oh, I want to be a footballer, I want to be yeah. this, I want to be that. And you go, yeah, brilliant. You've got to have, you've got to have them dreams. And yeah. I'm not going to stop you from trying to achieve it mm. but you better have something to back it up yeah exactly and and you know what the biggest thing is as well it ain't just about not making it as a footballer it's what you do once you finish yeah because the players that True. i've been working with i would say 98 percent of them in my squad last year still gonna have to go and get a job once they're done yeah at 35 so you need a career at 35 that yes. you ain't done anything in as a background yeah for the last 20 years because you left school and went straight in to become a footballer so even then, you still yeah. need a career, didn't you? Still need something to no, back it up. Uh-huh. Which That's is true. so difficult as well. I mean, 35 years old, you know, all you've known is football yeah. and nothing else. Where do you even start? Do you do? Yeah. That's a good point. It's a massive. It's a, it's a really, really good point. So when you are working with, like, academy players and stuff, obviously, you know, fitness, nutrition yeah. is vital. What about their education? How motivated are, you know, these players to get an education? I think it's got better. It has, well, no, it's got better. Hundred yeah. percent, but there's been a lot more of a focus on it. Um, the access to education's become better. So okay. years ago, if I'd have been taken on full time at, at sixteen, I'd have gone and done a token leisure and tourism course at the local college just mm-hmm. so they could tick the box to say that I was doing some sort of education. 
meant nothing really. It wasn't probably worth the paper that it was written on. Okay. Whereas now I had boys in my squad last year that during their scholarship years, their two scholarship years, done two A levels. Okay. So they do oh, like wow. a B tech That's or brilliant. whatever, which is offered to them. But there's opportunity for them to go and study additional. Mm-hmm. I put a thing in place. I don't know if the club have carried it on, but just before I left, we offered three boys their their first professional contract, oh, wow. and in the contract, I spoke to the PFA and the club and said I want it written in that one afternoon a week mm-hmm. or more if the boys want to, but a bare minimum, they need to go and do an evening course or if they want to go and do, I don't know, plumbing or anything yeah, like that, yeah. just as an example, or they want to do you know, extended education that we, us and the PFA, it's in their contract that not only are we giving you a year's contract, because as you quote there, the numbers that Chris gave you. Yeah. The likelihood is I'm giving you this year, two years, but after that, it's probably not going to go much further. Yeah. So you need to be prepared. Yeah, I exactly. I don't know the club took it on after that, but that was something that we were really passionate about to, to try and help them. Yeah. And if you've got like a young academy player who's only known football, you know, their whole life and they're getting released, yeah. how is that to deal with? Horrendous. Mm. Horrendous. I, I, I always found that, 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 that one at 16 was tough because... Yeah. At 16, you're doing your GCSEs, like you're still growing, you're becoming and trying to become an adult. You don't really know what direction you're going in. And all of a sudden, someone rips it all up and throws it in your face and and it's over. Um, And I think it's obviously obviously club dependent and the person dependent on how you deliver that message and the support that you give people after the, you know, after the decision Mm -hmm. is massive because you can't really leave them, especially... Especially like say talking like a club like Leighton Orient, where you're just sort of almost letting the kids go back out into the into the wild. Yeah, you know what I mean? exactly. Where are they going? What what are they mixing in? What yeah. type of circles are they got around them? What are their friends like? Mm-hmm. What are their mates doing while they're concentrating on football three or four times a week? What have all their mates been doing on the hours in the state that they live in? All them yeah, things are so yeah, important. Big thing to think you know? about. Um and that'd be club dependent and the type type of support that they've got around them, but it's a massive part of it now because yeah. I feel like you should almost be preparing the kids a lot of the time for that failure. Yeah, exactly. So that when they come to that decision at the end of the season, they pretty much already know. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The hope is there still that you might get to the next level. But the reality is that, and I know that Chris does a lot of work like that with the parents and the players at QPR to explain that actually the realistic part is that you aren't going to get released. Mm. You know what I mean? It's so hard. It's a morbid way to look at it, but it's the real way of looking at it. Exactly. Especially looking at the stats, I yeah. think. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah. Gosh, what would oh. you say is like the most rewarding part of coaching, and what do you find? It depends, most really. Challenging? I think like I mean, I've given lads their first team debuts. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've had a couple of lads go off to represent their country. Wow, uh, a couple of lads yeah. in my squad last year were, were Cypriot, and they 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 went off to do like 18s, 21s of the Cypriot team. So oh, wow. that was fantastic to see. Mm. I think it, again, it, like I said the word perspective or, or context earlier. It depends who you're working with. Yeah. So like I, I coach Saturday mornings. I've got my own little football school, and I coach three, four, five, six, seven, up to sort of nine and ten year olds on a Saturday morning. Mm-hmm. And when I see the three year old. Yeah. Stop letting go of his mum's hand and Aww. dribbling off and joining in for the first time. The reward of seeing Aww, that is yeah. massive. And that sounds a bit think, far-fetched from working with an in, international football club. But the context of it is brilliant. Do you know yeah. what I mean? If you can try and entice the kid away and, and then exactly. if you can Especially see the kids age. executing <laughs> the skills that you've taught them when they play in games or yeah. you know, you, you work on a particular skill in training and they can achieve it. Them things are massive. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And then, and then, like I say, as the closer and further up the ladder you get, the the more rewarding it comes about looking at those players fitting into the team or the team achieving a goal or defending in a certain manner. Yeah, then it becomes about about that. Do you know what I mean? And then, like I say, the other side of it is the boys getting sold. We had two boys a year. We won the, the national league. One uh, Macaulay Bond got sold to uh, to oh. Cholton. Josh yeah. Caroma got sold to Huddersfield. Mm-hmm. So like okay. that again, like massive to see them boys yeah. Yeah. sold for transfer fees that are going to keep the club and the academy running. Yeah, that you're working for. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. So like, there's a real variety different. of different things. You know, we had mm-hmm. my, a big part of my thing when I was the coach was taking the players out and doing extra work outside of training. Mm-hmm. So you okay. see a player improving his heading or his passing or 
like again, it's another yeah, phase of it. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's really hard to put that in, but it's some massive higher moments when you see those boys get get those moves, moves that are going to probably change their lives. Yeah, in terms yeah. Of the type of money that they're going to be earning or representing their country. You probably feel like a proud dad in those moments. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. the year we won the league, I had a couple of lads in the squad that I'd worked with when they were like eight or nine. Oh, wow. First in the Orient, and then I come back, and they either come back similar sort of time to me, or, or were signed from elsewhere. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, we're celebrating winning the league. And I'm yeah, the that is massive. Eight or nine years old, awesome. so like surreal moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, exciting! And you know, looking at like youths and stuff like that. What what sort of sets? If there's like an academy player now, or someone wanting to get into academy, what sort of sets them apart from the rest? It depends. I think. Now, a number of things are, are, are key, like um, like physicality to the mm-hmm. game now. Do you know what I mean? We went through a phase, I think, a few years ago, and I think probably a big part of it was the Arsenal team, like the Invincibles. Invincible, in incredible, terms of unbelievable. The team. athleticism yeah. that was involved in that, in that team was outrageous. Yeah. yeah. And I think that shaped and started to change yeah. English football. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's changed again, hasn't it? Because now yeah. like, the game is incredibly quick, incredibly physical. So now, as an athlete, You've mm-hmm. got to be able to cope. So you, you don't have to be six foot four like Vieira, yeah. but yeah. you can be you can be small but agile and quick and you know and, and still impact the game. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think athleticism is massive. But I think when you look now and it goes back to that thing I said about academies, is the high level of technical ability now that, that people have got the understanding that people have got tactically about the game because of yeah. the whole package that's presented to them. Mm-hmm. It, there, there's so many things that have to influence it. And I think when you look at a late in Orient, you might be physically outstanding. That might get you a career in League Two. Yeah. You might be physically outstanding and technically outstanding. So that might get you a career in League One or the Championship. Mm-hmm. But then you've got to be tactically unbelievable to go and play in the Premier League and psychologically focused that you can deal with all the things that go on around it. Like, yes. Do yeah. you know what I mean? So yeah. it makes up the whole package. Yeah. So I think that's when you start to see what the elite boys are all about. And, and the women's game where that's grown as well now. Yeah, yeah exactly. At the very, on the very rise. top, the package is, is is so much more rounded, isn't it? Yep. And you yes. like watching the women as well, Ty. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They've done well. It's been a great week for us as a club in the fact that, well, last week we beat Wimbledon, we beat um, Burnley, and our women beat, um, the week before that, beat Reading. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's fantastic. We, yeah, yeah, absolutely. The women are an academy players were academy teams were well, um, under 23s as well and under 18. So yeah, 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 absolutely. Absolutely. But it's fascinating. Hearing Ross too is amazing. What goes in, it's all amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. Do you feel like you're learning a lot today from Ross? Oh, very nice. <laughs> Got to get you in again, Ross. Not only that, he's, he's managed to come up with a song as well. Oh, wait, right. go on. <laughs> and no, your no, no. which I think is absolutely I great. <laughs> Well, listen, it doesn't matter. You did it, so I, I think it's brilliant. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. You don't often get to that to a coach. Yeah, you know, exactly. And for them to coach tell you manager. what goes in and all that, you know, so that's amazing. amazing. And, Ross, when we look at, you know, the Arsenal team and everything coming, what is your perspective on Arsenal? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not an Arsenal fan, but Who is your team? I, I think your team thing, is... I grew up watching Lane Orient. Oh, so look, yeah. your team was all yeah, so, Orient through and through. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, I fantastic. think the thing for me now is now I'm not now I'm not working. I go to different games. So I've been to watch Cambridge a couple of times because okay. there's a couple of lads there that I play. I took the kids to watch Chelsea. Uh, oh yeah, you know, yeah. Do, do a variety of different things to yeah. watch different teams. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I think what frustrates me so much is about Arsenal is you feel like you see a, a historical part of the English game falling away a little bit at mm-hmm. the moment. Do you know what I mean? Or not at the moment for the last. For the last few years, and that, that's frustrating. I think I was energized by looking at the way that they tried to go about the transfer market in the summer. Yeah, you know I mean, trying to look younger, to try to look English, British. If they have, as not just in this window, but in in, the, in in some of the other players that they've brought in and the young players that they've brought into the team. Yeah, mm. through the club, but it doesn't feel like there's that top level there at the moment. It's yeah. going to drag them closer to the. To what you now class as the big boys, do you know yeah, I mean? and you worry that that gap's getting getting. It's always, always going to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger because the amount of money that, that the top ones have got, but it's only going to get harder, isn't it? Because mm-hmm. they're going to pull away, and I, it's a it's a frustration. Um, because I do think that if you're an Arsenal, you you as fans as as, as expectation when you watch them, is you still crave to see 
top performers. Do you know what I mean? You still yeah. see, when I see Omri and Bergkamp and Vieira and Petit, people like that, and and about like say as much as it it was refreshing to see the players that they brought in over the summer, the young boys that are coming into the team, it's great, but it's not the outstanding ones, is there? It's not yeah. the, the top players that you know. You're talking about Harry Kane going to Man City, you're talking, you know, all the mm. top players that Chelsea bring back, Lukaku, yeah. are just not capable of that at that moment, are they? And, Therefore, then you can't make up the gap. Yeah. What do you think it is as to why, you know? Well, we just... I mean, you, you would say, you say investment because it's the, intri- the simplest thing to put it all down to. But ultimately, they've invested over the summer, haven't they? Yeah, they've they spent have. money. Have exactly. Spent, and spent had a few proper players. money like, yeah. on some players, you know? So you can't solely say you're not investing. I think that may have been, you, you, you two tell me better than my knowledge, but in, in recent years, Maybe they haven't done that, which is probably why it has no, tailed off. Yeah, fallen yeah, no, away. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Um, but you know, look at the you know you look at the Sackers, the Smith Rose, and people like that that yeah. are coming into the team, and even White and people that that they've brought in. Mm-hmm. They, if they're going to be top players, proper top players, mm-hmm. they need to be around top players. Yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? And I it's think so that's true. where the where the balance is lacking a little bit for Arsenal at the moment. Is they got they haven't got the top ones that have always had dragging the good good players who could be top ones in that direction mm. yeah. at the mm. moment i mean as you can imagine you know us arsenal fans are you know getting a bit frustrated yeah, i mean we have had now what three wins on the bounce yeah, yeah but yeah. you know to the arsenal it's great to hear <laughs> back again yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah we hope we lost yeah, 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 yeah. exactly yeah, yeah. do you feel you know because a lot of stick has been going to arteta yeah. So when you sort of look at Arteta, his tactics, do you feel like there's, you know, perhaps something missing there or something that he just needs to, you know, change up a bit? I think he's hard because I always stick up for the manager for all yeah. those reasons. But I think at the start of the season, before it had, it had not started great, my yeah. question would have been who is investing? Who is yeah. who is signing these players? Yeah. yeah, Because that would be one of my things that I think now, with the way modern football is these days, it isn't always the manager. Of course, the no, manager, what people would sort of misunderstand sometimes is, of course, the manager is involved in those conversations. He don't mm. just turn up one morning and he's got someone, a yeah. new player in front of him. Yeah. He's part of that process. Yeah. But because of the turnover of managers, because of the investment that comes in from these clubs, someone else signs that last one. Or it might be yeah. an approval of two or three players that were on the list and that one was chosen by that player. But that would be one of the question marks that I would have asked at that time. I think you you do have to look at tactics and how it how it's how it's applied. Mm. Um, but and again, it comes that, that I'm, I'm contradicting myself a little bit, but it comes back to that thing again of did he sign the players? If he did, mm-hmm. then there's even more criticism that, that that comes onto his shoulders, isn't there? Because yeah, he's made those selections, he's putting them into that shape, he's picking that team every week. If you're then picking up something else and trying to assemble it in the way that you want, or you want to be able to try to, to put something out there, then then it becomes very, very difficult. But then again, it comes back to that thing that if that is the case, then the club's not in a great position, is yeah, it? Yeah, you know, exactly. They're, they're recruiting a tight, you need to, he, he wants to play a certain brand of football, which we all know what it could look like because he's come from, from where he's come from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He needs those type of players to be able to achieve it, doesn't he? Absolutely. Ty, would you say we've got those type of players in? Uh, well, not enough. I hear what Ross is saying. I think what it is, what it's going to be very difficult for us to attract those players because of the fact that we're not in Europe, we're not in the Champions League, mm-hmm. we're not in Europa League. And it's almost as if we're going to have to wait for the players to develop or get a player like, if I go back to 1995, Dennis, Dennis Bergkamp, because Bruce, Bruce Riott was the manager then. And he brought him and he was a world-class player at the time. And that is when our fortunes started to change. We got into, I think, I was at the game, we beat Norwich, not we beat Bolton Wanderers, sorry, 2-1 in the last minute. Um, David Platt equalised and Dennis scored a screamer from about 20 yards. And we got into Europe that, that season. And then from then on, then two years later, we brought in Arsene after um, Bruce got sacked, unfortunately. We brought in Arsene, then he, then, you know, we came third in 96, 97, then 97, 98. His first um, full season, we won the league, you know, and that's how it all happened. But it all happened with someone like Dennis. So I think if we could get that player, possibly. But it's going to be, like you say, it's going to be very difficult because we're not in Europe and we're yeah. not where we want to be. So it's going to be hard. It's going to take somebody to have to come 
to us of a big, big standing player for maybe our fortunes training because that's what happened last time. Mm-hmm. That's you what happened last time. Historically, it happens, isn't it? Like, it happened to Chelsea where they had Zola and people like yeah, that start yeah. to change. Exactly. The, mm-hmm. the exactly. Of it. And that's, that's the, I suppose, the point I was trying to make really yeah, yeah. is that all these, because there's some good players there. Do you know yeah. I mean? They've sure. signed some good players and they're obviously the young boys that are coming to the team have done great. Yeah. yeah. They just need that one or two to drag them up to yeah. that level, don't they? It's just going to take, it's going to take time. So we're going to have to be very patient. We are, but fans are getting a bit impatient, ain't they? Yeah, <laughs> as we experience. Yeah, we are, but you know, like I said before, every team has their cycles. Yeah, it's so, true. You know, and I think, like Ross said, the Invincibles, <laughs> we were lucky to have that. The Invincibles are up there. I think the travel team. So if we can get, if the Invincibles are there, if we get there, then we've done incredible. Exactly. Because to me, the Vin- the Invincibles overachieved, and that was unbelievable. And that team, like Ross was saying, you had Thierry, you had Robert. I better say this. So then it's Henri, Robert, Robert Pires, Sylvain, Sylvain, Viltor, they scored the winner at Old Trafford when we won the league in the 57th minute. You know, you had Jens, Jens Lehmann, you know, you had Gilberto, Gilberto Silva, you had Patrick, Patrick Vieira. All those players, they come around once yeah, in a minute. And I think what's really interesting about some of them is not yeah. all of them players are top. No, top they're not. They're players, not. But they, but they molded as a team. Exactly. That could, that mold could as a team. Yeah, and I think that, that you know, you look at like yeah. Sylvester, you look at Lehmann, like you look like, Oh, fantastic! Like really good players, but yeah. they, like, it, it was like a, they knew how to play as a team. Solidarity. Team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They knew I mean? they knew how, they knew how to play as a team. That's all and, and and that's how we got and that's how they got the best out of each other. Yeah. We did as a club. Uh, JJ ten, JG ten. Sorry, is saying I think Arsenal's young players will be incredible in the future. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. But that's in the future. Yeah, that's in the future. I mean, well, look time. at what Saka's and Emil Smith Rowe's doing Kyle, for us now. Emil, you got um, you got Fuller in as well, Balogun. Yeah, yeah. And you got Charlie, Charlie Patino as well. I'm sure you know him. Ross. Yeah, I, 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 I really like Smith Rowe. I mean, I know it, it's probably an obvious thing to say. Do you know what I mean? But <laughs> yeah, he's um, they do need time. They do because they're coming the into the team in a team that's not flying. Yes, it's really different if you bring in. I, I look back to like the class of '92, and that's a bit of a freak, but. Yeah. On the whole, you look at like Jack Grealish going into the Villa team. Like it's one yes. young player going into a team that's done all right, got promoted out of the Championship, that sort of thing. Yeah. If it, Phil Foden goes into Man yes. City, it's one player going into like a proper team. Do you know what yeah. I mean? When you're going in and you're the young one and you're you're one of the better performers, it's very, very tough for you. So yeah, there'll be dips it's... and there'll be peaks and troughs for him along the way. But oh. I think there's some good I think I think that comment's spot on that there's gonna be a lot of good players coming out of that. And it's a good academy. Yeah. yeah, and nice. when you look at you know the new signings as well, like Tommy Asu, oh, Tavares, yeah, yeah. 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 you know them, Nuno, they, Albert, Albert Lukonga, even Ramsdale as well. As well. Aaron, looking... Aaron, yeah, done brilliant, brilliant against Burnley, absolutely amazing, amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like we said, it's still, it's, it's still going to take time. Okay. You have to be patient. You have to be patient. That's what I would say. For I know fans are getting impatient, but. We have to be patient because that's why. Because, like I said, I go back to that 95 96. I think before Dennis, before Dennis came, we weren't going anywhere. And all of a sudden, because I think Bruce Bruce signed David Platt and then he signed Bruce, Bruce Rock and he signed Dennis. And those were two top. And then our fortunes changed. And in the three years we won the league, I think that's what it's going to take. I think that's what it's going to But we, we have to be yes. patient because, like I said, we have no divine right to win any, anything. And I also think as well. We have been, by what we've won, we've been very spoiled as a club and as a fan base because, you know, incredible. I mean, winning the most FA Cups, you know, winning the league at Old Trafford, I was lucky enough to go there. Winning the league at White Lane, I was lucky enough to go there as well. I was lucky enough to see Vince. I was lucky. Maybe because because I'm older, I might, yeah. <laughs> my yeah, age, yeah, I was lucky to see right. all those I mean, teams. That, that adds the expectations exactly. to everyone. But it makes exactly. The pressure on the players and exactly. the tough. It makes exactly. The, the, the want from the fans even absolutely even more oh, exactly. craving, absolutely. or the other 100%. thing is, is you ain't seen it but all you do is you listen to your mum and dad yes. Yes. yeah yes. all time <laughs> <about it. laughs> yeah but, then, but what i would say is it's un, it's an unfair comparison because that's why the invincibles are there because they were absolute legends yeah. man united, you know, united the United. the travel team the same thing, that's but... what i mean the travel yeah exactly exactly yeah. exactly exactly the travel team and invincibles you know yeah, two of the greatest team. teams you know it's difficult but like i said every team has a cycle you look at man city they didn't win the league for about is it 45 years mm. before I think Sheikh Mansour came in. 
And you know, and look, and look, and look where they are now. Exactly. They were even doing worse than us. So it just shows you how teams' fortune can fly. You know, but we have to be patient. We have to be patient and have to be realistic in the fact that this is where we are now. We hope we're not here forever, but we're here now. We have to accept that this is where we are as a club. And then hopefully we can move on. But that's what we have to do. But I think some we'll of our fans... We'll get through the tough times. Absolutely. Some of us, but the, the thing is, fans now haven't seen tough times. I mean, I haven't even seen tough times. Mm. But there were tough times when we were near the bottom. We were near the bottom, you know. We that was the, just the other day, mate. No, I mean, but I mean <laughs> at, the end of, at the end of the season, actually yeah. fighting for the bottom. I haven't seen that because I'm not old enough. But, you know. So, you know, there's been worse times we ended up 12th before <laughs> in the season, you know. So you can imagine... We're not twelve before. I know. We're not, imagine if we're not twelve. What people will be saying? So exactly. you, know, you know, and 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 also, I look at other clubs. Not in the forest. Leeds United. They've just come up. Look what happened to them. Look what happened to them. That hasn't happened proper, to us. Proper clubs. That's you know, what I mean. Football, Sheffield Wednesday. Derby, Sh- yeah, exactly. Like that. Proper clubs. You never See, exactly. And, team, and teams who never even came back. Who never came back. You know. So we're fortunate to uh, not to, to not to not have that. But you know, I think as a fan base, we have to stick together. Hundred percent, and we have to. the fans play a vital role as well. A massive role, a massive role. And I, I always say, listen, it's fantastic to be winning. It's easy to support your team when you're winning, but when you're not winning, is when the true support comes out. Hundred percent. You know, and that's why stay what I loyal think. to your club. Absolutely, that's what I always think. You know, and then you look at Lane Orient, um, Russia's team. That's why I admire those fans because they win nothing and they're still supporting. I mean, if they're not winning trophies. And they're still supporting the teams every week, exactly. no matter where they are in the league, you know. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a dedication. For that's what I'm saying. People, that's what I'm saying. People at every level, it's a dedication to what I like. Isn't it? Exactly. Uh, somewhere on a Tuesday night. Exactly. God knows what time. Exactly. Morning, yeah. Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Really exactly. But I did, like I said, I find it great. Yeah. I, I find it great. I love it. I love it. I love, I love traveling. Yeah. The longer journey. Meeting that, new people. And yeah, absolutely. Going to going to the towns and cities, you know, that you wouldn't ordinarily go without football. So for me, it's been brilliant because without watching Arsenal, which I'm, I've, I find myself very fortunate and blessed to, I would not have been to half of these lovely cities. Like Ross was saying about Bournemouth and Norwich. If it's not for football, I would never go to yeah, Bournemouth. Exactly. I wouldn't know what Bournemouth is about. I wouldn't know what Norwich is about. I mean, I've been to places like um, Scarborough. Can you imagine? <laughs> you know what I mean? No, but it's a variation of places. Like, you go to Port Vale and you go, oh, you're going to Port Vale. I've been to... You, I've places. been to Port Vale as yeah, well, yeah. and I would never go to Scarborough to see these places. It's been absolutely wicked as well. And I've got, I've got to say, I'm sorry to um, go off the subject, but I've got to say, I don't know, have you been to Wigan? Yeah. What do you find about Wigan? Wigan to me is the friendliest place I've ever seen in my fortunate career as a fan going football because the Wigan people are just so. So so friendly. I really miss them being in Premier League. How did you find it? Yeah, it, it was interesting, really, because for me. <laughs> Don't always get to see the place. No, you don't. I can Do imagine. I mean? like, yeah. It's a bit different if you go like um if we're overnight, yes, stay yeah. in the hotel. Obviously, we, that wasn't something we're blessed to do every week, like the oh. boys do. But yeah, yeah, yeah. If yeah. you're really north, you stay overnight. Yeah, you know that's I mean? right. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you get the opportunity if you get there at a good time or in yeah. the morning, you can go and have a walk around the town and see these places. And like, yeah. like you, you get to go like I stayed in Penrith. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like a barrow. You think like yeah, yeah, barrow. Yeah, yeah, never, never, ever go to these places. That's right. That's right. That's right. So you don't always get to see that. I think the no. thing what you see, and it's interesting that you say about Wigan. Wigan yeah. was a big club in League One at the time. Yes, yeah, well, it still is. Yeah, when yeah, we yeah. played them, yeah, and it was like whoa, the stadium, really nice stadium, yeah, like, like, like nice place. Which in the Premier League, it was probably just run on the mill. Yeah, you know yeah. yeah. But yeah, for yeah, us, yeah, it was a lovely yeah. place to go, yeah, and it was yeah. very like welcoming. The, the, the place yeah. that always sticks in my mind as a stadium and as the people. Sheffield United, you talk about a club that yes, like clubs that have fallen away. We yeah, played them yeah. in League One, and there was like for us, it was like twenty of like nineteen twenty thousand proper crowd. Like I mean, yeah, it was unbelievable. Mm. Yeah. Um, but you got off the coach, and as you your coach pulled into the stadium, the man met you in a Sheffield United blazer. Oh, wow. Welcome to Bramall Lake. Like, oh, yeah, nice. that was, I remember getting off thinking this is like proper English history. Yeah, Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, the way yeah, that they were yeah, holding yeah, themselves yeah. and conducting themselves. So like, yeah. I can imagine that. But I'm sure you're talking about Wigan as a whole and, and around it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. The place, fans, the fans, which yeah. Is, which is unfortunately the bit that we didn't really. Yeah, yeah. Because you just coached him, coach back. Yeah, absolutely, again. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, Wigan was very nice. I mean, getting going to places like Doncaster as well. Yeah. And yeah. Never, <laughs> going there as well. Going to Rotherham as well. It's unbe- yeah. unbe- unbelievable. Even going to the Rico Arena, and I didn't do that as a 
as I did that as a, a fan, but to watch our women in um, um, a final years ago, and uh, you probably have, so I, I, I want to ask you, you probably have been to the Rico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, to me, should be a Premier League ground. I don't know what you think. It's like a Premier League ground. Yeah. Commentary, it's an yeah, amazing up, ground. It's, it's incredible got, yeah, ground. it holds itself like a proper... proper yeah, yeah, it's, stadium, a, it's an amazing it's ground, nice. you know. And all yeah. these, all these, without football, I would not have gone to these places. So, you know, I just, I just, I just feel very lucky to have done that. And we know you like to explore these places when you go yeah, as well, Ty, yeah, taking yeah, walks to. and yeah, everything. Absolutely. Guys, sorry, whoever it is that keeps spamming the chat, can you just stop? I've tried to block you countless times, but just stop spamming. You're not welcome here. Sorry, guys. Um, you've been told by Charlene. And that's, you've been told by me. And Charlene's very polite, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> They're just going a bit wild in there. All right. So, guys, yeah, so if we start looking at the Premier League fixtures, what are we saying about the North London derby? <laughs> Ross, I, I'm assuming you're going to be uh, defending Tottenham. I'm not. No. Oh, no, oh. No, no. Why would he no, defend no, Tottenham? I, don't, I, um, I think he's because he's a yeah, good I, when I, 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 like, I really like the manager. At, at I, do know. I really I like him. And, and do you know what I felt? Whether he was Tottenham's first choice, I think yeah. probably know he wasn't. But yeah, I think it's quite refreshing that they then went and took someone from that had been at a smaller club in the Premier League. You know, you like yeah. to see the, the like you know look at like the like likes of Dean Smith and people like that. Yes, you yeah. want people like that to get the extra chance. Do you know what yeah. I mean? when they've done well or achieved? Yeah, with, yeah, with a yeah. club, and I think that's yeah. what he did. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, but I do worry, and similar talking about the investment at Arsenal, I do worry about the makeup of the Tottenham squad. For Tottenham at the moment, in terms oh, really? of you know the Harry Kane saga and yeah, the, yeah. the staying and the going, and I think how much impact that'll have on him, you know, in terms of in terms of what he's done, you know, thinking that you're going and then yeah, and, and then, then yeah. coming to that acceptance yeah. to stay in and how that makes up that whole whole dynamic. So I think Arsenal. Oh, we <laughs> love that. We like you even yeah. more now, Rob. Absolutely. I know. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Ask me all them Tottenham questions. I know, exactly. Way, but I they definitely weren't it, they it up the sleeve, that. really. <laughs> oh. Oh. What sort of scoreline are we looking on, at? 2-0. Oh. oh, a clean sheet as well. <laughs> oh, Ross has stolen my thunder. That's exactly what I was going to say. 2-0. Oh, well, no surprise there, Ty. But what, and, and if I can elaborate on I probably can't because Ross is probably said everything, so I, I better just go home now because he, he, he <laughs> said everything. He said everything. You go next. You go first. <laughs> no, 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 no. He said everything. He said everything. Yeah, I think I think with the game, form goes out the window. Hundred percent. You know, so you know the, the fact that we're in form now will mean nothing. I just think for us, as long as their desire is not better than us, and as long as we want it as much as we say we do, then I think we'll win. Yeah. You know. And when we look at Arteta as well, you know, the way the season started, we've now got three wins as well. This is a massive game for him. You know, this it could is, really turn things around. It is, it's, it's a massive game. But, you know, I just think at Emirates, like I said, I think um, I'm doing the fan cam. <laughs> Shout out to Cecil G. <laughs> <laughs> Big up, Cecil. Um, on um, Wednesday night, they were saying about Tottenham's record. And, and as far as I know, I could be wrong. I hope I'm not wrong. I think they've won once in 23 years. So it works out. I was watching one of the, of the, the news channels that so I won't name. They've had, had one win in 28 visits. So I think it's one in 23. So historically, they don't have a good record at um, Highbury and Emirates. Mm -hmm. So that's in our favour. We always seem to be up for it against Tottenham. You could say the other way around that we don't have a good record at White Lane, but the fact that we won the league, to me, eclipses everything. Yeah. That's unbelievable. <laughs> So, you know, we're always up for it, you know. But like I said, it's about desire and wanting it. And their desire mustn't be more. We must want it as much as football, human leave, that's, a, if I can say, possible. And if we do, I, 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 think, I think we will win. But like I said, form goes out the window. 100%. In Derby. So, you know what I mean? I, you know what I mean? So I have to say that because every time when we had Invincibles and all that, and we had a great team, and Tottenham came, the dark, they always said form goes out the window. So we have to say that as well. Guys, get active in the comments as well. Let us know what your score predictions are. Um, Ty and Ross are both saying 2-0 to mm -hmm. Arsenal. And, you know, I'm going to agree with them as well. I'm going to go 2-0 Arsenal scorers. on this one. Any scorers? Oh, any scorers. Who who do we even want to see on the lineup? Well, Is it going to be Ramsdale or Leno? And Well, 
Well, it's interesting. I um I like both of the goalkeepers. I like Aaron and I like and I like that. But I will be very surprised if Aaron doesn't play. Especially yeah. after his performance at Burnley, which was absolutely, Man of the match performance as well. Absolutely magnificent. Absolutely magnificent. If Burn does play, then I don't know where that leaves Aaron, but I think Aaron will play. But as for goal scorers, I definitely put Pierre in that category because he's got a great record against Tottenham. Yep. Another player, I would I don't know. It depends. I would like to put Alexander, but I don't think he's gonna start. So Yeah, I think I don't know. He'd probably be on the bench. But Thomas Partey has gotta be top of the list as well. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I think I'll go for Pierre and Alexander. Okay. For yeah. um, what goal about scoring. Yeah, what about you? Our boy Saka. He's got to get oh, the Bukai, minutes. I forgot about I, I forgot He's about got Bukai. to start a score a goal. Okay, who else? Oh, man. Emil smith Row. Oh, okay. I don't know. Okay. But no, maybe you see, I'll say a young talent and a senior player. The reason, the reason why I'm going for them is because Pierre scored and Alexander, they've got good records against top. They have. You know, so... That's but then I we say. see the little young ones shining as well, and yeah, no, you course, know, showing course. that energy. I mean, look at Tavares and Lukonga, the way they drive you forward know, as well. Oh, but absolutely brilliant, absolutely super. But I'm gonna, are they gonna start though? That's the thing. Oh, yeah, Tav, I, I would prefer Tioni to start. This is the thing, people would even but say, I wouldn't him. mind seeing Lukonga paired up with Partey. Well, people are even saying that Kieran shouldn't start, and Why? I can't see that. Because, no, we, we gotta have Kieran because he's, because he's, <laughs> because he's quote unquote injury problem. Which mm. could be a fair point, but what I say is that when you have a player like Kieran, his big game mentality is massive because exactly as far as I know, Ross is Ross, Ross is the expert more than me. No, I think you, that is what, that's what we've been saying there yeah. really about the big players. Yeah, you, 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 need you them want to, them, you need to, them to puff their exactly. chest yeah. and lead a little bit and, and show some example. And exactly, you can't have you can't. I don't think you can ever have enough of them. Players. Absolutely, hundred percent. Absolutely, in a, in a big game like that. Exactly. Them, them Absolutely, and if they're fit, because because uh, apparently Kieran's never lost in a um, Celtic Rangers derby, and that okay. says everything. That says it all. Kieran also, you know, the experience he must have is massive. Is and massive. He, he sort of shows those leadership qualities. Exactly. Well, so. Exactly. Exactly. So you know, why would I can understand, but no, I would pay definitely pay Kieran. I'd be shocked unless he's injured. He's not. Yeah. I'd be shocked if he doesn't start. Then we got Tavares as a nice. Back up, you know, right? Albert, yeah, 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 He's got yeah, to be yeah, up yeah. There. yeah. Who, who would be your goalkeeper option? Ross? I just like Ramsdale because I've yeah. seen him for, for, for a long time now. Oh, you know right. what I mean, so yeah, you just I said it there about the managers of getting the opportunity when you see someone climb and get to a proper club like that, yeah. you want to see him perform and stay. I think, like you just said, what really interesting point you just made there was he had a good game in the week, yeah. But, it's hanging in the balance of which one you choose. Mm -hmm. I think mean, there comes a point in the season where you've got to go, now, do you know what? He's the one. You yeah. Might yeah. play one in the cup games, of course. But I think when it comes a point where you need to know who your goalkeeper is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Exactly. And United had it last year, didn't they? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And then exactly. now he's gone right bank. No, it's him. Yes. I think you need that definition. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. You do. There comes a time where you've got to say, no, this is what I'm doing and this is how yeah. I'm doing it. And, and, and you know, live, live by the go decision. Yeah. yeah. For the player as well. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, absolutely. And just to sort of have that solidity at the back as yeah, well. I, and I just think it gives consistency to everyone. Yeah, because that's yeah. been our problem as well, the change up, you know. Yeah, yeah the goalkeeper, much. no, you know. Just well, the lineups as well. Mm. But then what I would say is that Mikel hasn't always had his first 11. That's enough. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't know if he has. When he's got the first 11, then you can really judge him, you know. Yeah, Which yeah. Hopefully, he's on his way to find him. Well, hopefully, hopefully. Um, yeah. Assuming everyone stays fit. Yep. And COVID don't affect another major problem. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. When we look at Chelsea versus Man City, I mean, <laughs> what are we saying there? <laughs> it's obviously a really difficult one to call for obvious reasons. Yeah. But he just seems to have his have his number, doesn't he? Too sure. He seems to he seems to have something over. Pep yeah, out, and mm. I think Chelsea look really good. Yeah, Chelsea look yeah, really they do. good. I think they've got like they can defend. They they look like if you're attacking them and under pressure and putting them under pressure, and that Man City will have their spells in the game just purely because of the quality they got in the way that they play. Mm. Chelsea look like they can like take that in. Yeah, you know what I mean they look like they can go. Okay, we'll defend and be difficult to play against and play on the counter attack with the players that they got. 
Um, or if they need to go and have a right good go at you, they've got so much quality they can yeah. have a right good go at you. Like <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. So I don't I don't go against Pep very often. Mm-hmm. And I, don't, I don't really know if I can quite bring myself to do that. No, I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm gonna go one nil Chelsea. One nil, okay. Yeah. Well, you know what? Listen, I think my Uber's coming. <laughs> my, my Uber's coming. You know what I mean? I think I'm just. I bet. I better leave right now. By Will, by Will Young. I better leave right now because not only has Russ broken it down, he's actually named two songs which I can't believe. Under pressure, Dave Bar- David Bowie and Queen, and also. Look, I've uh, I've, what else did you say, Russ? You named another song. Right? I've, I've forgotten the song that he named. That's you not know, like you, you know, named another song. You named oh, another sorry, song. You've named no. You named two. It's brilliant, Ross. It's absolutely amazing. <laughs> I can't believe it. I can't believe you named the. Oh, you named another song as well. We're gonna have to look back. You named two songs. All right. While you're you thinking of songs. the other song, what is your score prediction? Well, the thing is, I hate, I hate everything that Ross is saying, but I just want Man City to win. I just want Chelsea to be stopped. <laughs> he is right. Chelsea are looking. Unfortunately, they are looking very very good. But I'm just thinking. I'm just hoping that Man City remember. What happened in the fact that they got knocked out by Chelsea on Chelsea on the way to um, the FA Cup final, which Leicester won, and they lost in the Champions League final. And I hope the Man City players remember that. Enough drive and motivation that, to get that, the result. That's it. Sorry. Unbelievable EMF. Ross, you are too You're good. Unbelievable. You named two songs, yeah. Oh, two songs were that is incredible. Oh, that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> no, Ross, it, Ross is brilliant. It's absolutely fantastic. Should we get him to start singing, Ross? He should do. So, yeah. go on, you start naming stuff. We'll get tired to sing. Let's see um, if, he, if he'll keep that up. Listen, if I could sing as good. Oh, Helen's here. Oh, Helen. What's going on, Helen? Helen? Right. Hey. All right, Helen. Nice to see you. Listen, if I could sing as well as Ross could analyze, then I'd be like Beyonce and Alicia Keys. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I hope I want Man City to win. I want Man City I, I know to what you win. mean for the sake of the Premier League. You know, sort of I just want Chelsea to be stopped. Yeah. Yeah. Chelsea yeah. to be stopped because if they if they were to beat Man City, then you know it's gonna be very hard to stop them. Mm. You know, I'm just hoping that um they can Man City players can remember that they got stopped from winning the Champions League as well. So you know, I I I, I And they need they need a result, Man City. They do they, they do. do. They do. Listen, I don't really want to go against Ross at all, because <laughs> that would be a that that would be a mistake. <laughs> That's for sure. But I'm gonna go for my a Man City win. Hopefully, oh. hopefully Man City win of uh, one nil, one nil, one nil. Hopefully. <laughs> Same as well. What about you? What, what about you? Do you know what? Lukaku just seems a bit unstoppable. Is Reece James back now? Because he got a red card, didn't he? Penalty, yeah, he is. He's yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, in the top corner. Again, that's the villa. So he could send them through oh. to the next round of the Carabao Cup. I don't know. No, I'm no, talking about the Premier League. Yeah, when did he get sent off? He, he got sent, sent off, off Liverpool, Liverpool. Liverpool. The yes, Liverpool game. Yeah. And he's capable of scoring goals. He I mean, he made some man. Yes. I'm going to go 3-1. Chelsea. Wow, that is big. big. I know. Four goals. Are we wow. watching that game? <laughs> Wait, is, who's in goal? Is well, um, Mendy? Is he out injured? I don't know if it's, well, he's, he I wasn't fit enough. The one that yeah. you're not sure because he didn't play in the week. He didn't yeah. play in the week. He, he wasn't fit enough. No, he wouldn't have done. He was um, no. Afro Balaga. All right, I'm, I'm going to go three one. Go for it. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Decision and over. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be a free one to Man City. That's big, Charlie. That's big. <laughs> what are we saying about Manchester United versus Aston Villa? Do you think Aston Villa's missing Grealish? I mean, they have got yeah, other, of course they you are. know, quality players. Of course they are. Yeah, I but, think I think in the longer term, I I, I hope they do well. Um, I, I think in the longer term, it might might turn them into a bit more of a collective yeah. team where yeah. it don't all. All land on on Grealish's shoulders to yes. create and get them opportunities. I think the, the signings that they made have been really good. Very Once good. they get Very them good. up to scratch, playing every week, there. Very good. They'll have a have a decent side. I think yeah. Danny Ings is like an absolute steal in terms yeah. of the signing that he Absolutely made. Absolutely amazing, amazing. I think amazing. Um, it's hard to go against Man United at the minute, and it because he's mm. he's scoring. But I watched the game against West Ham. I was quite disappointed with him. Mm. Even though they won that won the way that they won. Yeah. Oh, the two one. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna yeah. go for a draw, I think. Yeah. I'm gonna go one all. Okay. <laughs> one all. Well, I love I love that Russ. I'm going the thing is about is I'm going for a bit of win. Cool. Oh, are you? Really, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know me. Would I ever the only Oh, oh actually, sorry. 
Sorry, I forgot I was talking to. The only day I would say Manchester United are going to win is if it helps us to win the league or something. <laughs> That's all. I want Aston Villa to win. I want Aston Villa to win. I'm going for Aston Villa. Uh, uh, one one nil, and I'll, I'll even have a scorer. Um, uh, this Villa team, no, I haven't forgotten the Villa team. But, um, Tyrone means with header. That's what okay. I'm going for. I'm going for. Ross is absolutely right about Ronaldo and all that, but it showed that um, they can be got at because, like you said, they were fortunate enough to beat West Ham, and that was West Ham without no Mikel Antonio, yeah, which is right. on fire. Yeah, and yeah, if he had, yeah. can imagine if he had played, yeah. if he had played, that could have been a very different story. So, you know, I think <coughs> Villa were more defensively um, solid now. You know, they got Emiliano, unfortunately for us, you know. I know. And I think they've got very good defence now. Like Ross says, they're more. They're, they're more of a better collective unit without Jack Grealish, even though they do miss him. So I think I think Villa will fancy their chances. What about what when about we you? look at um, you know Ronaldo, yeah. and then we look at Jesse Lingard? Yes, you do, you do. But you the know, I, think the, I think the tough thing for United at the minute is what is what is their team? Yeah, exactly. Mm. Fitting all those players into one. Yeah, I, 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 true. I, I don't follow Man United, but I, <laughs> I don't think I could pick mm. their team. Do you know what I mean? I don't yes, know true. Where you put Lingard, Sancho, exactly. Yeah, Rashford, Van de Beek, Amy, yeah, when he comes back, Cavani, exactly. You know, they've got they've got embarrassing riches of players, and yeah, yeah. yeah. that would be the tough thing to call. Yeah. So who's going to play and who's going to who's going to be able to do that? Like Lingard's come on and done great, hasn't he? But yeah, does he start? Where do you put them all? You know, it's yeah. I know, isn't it? Exactly, and, and it is tough. I was watching the game, the West Ham game. Like yeah. Ronaldo, he didn't watch Ronaldo, and he didn't wow you. Yeah. He scores again. He scores, yeah. 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 You know exactly. I mean? yeah. But he's the only guy ever, I think, in history that's taught himself to be a goal scorer. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. He's just in the box and he scores. But yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's an hard one for them. Yeah. No, no Ross, you're absolutely right. But like I, like I said, the fact that West Ham won in midweek, Aston Villa would have looked, looked at that. Dean Smith is quite clever. He would have looked at that and they would have been looking at ways. If West Ham can do that, then there's maybe a chance for us. That's yeah. all. You know, the fact that they lost to West Ham midweek, if they'd won, the fact that they lost midweek shows there's chink in the armour. And Villa will try to their best to exploit that. So, what? So yeah, capitalise. Even a better word, Charlie. So <laughs> what's your prediction then? I'm actually going to go 2-1, Man U. <laughs> I mean, I feel like Fair I'm going to be completely wrong, just not going for the same scores as no, Ross, no, you know? No, do <laughs> He's that. the expert, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing you out of work at the moment, so I can't be the expert. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, what, what, yeah listen, but you know. Listen, Ross, the way you're talking. This is a what, manager, a coach's perspective. Listen, so. Ross, don't worry about that. Listen, I'm sure when you come out, there's probably job, there's probably no, a queue of job offers waiting exactly. for you when you come out. So don't worry about that, Ross. You would have no problem with that. Yeah, Definitely no, no, no. Of course, of course, no, 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 no. I wouldn't want to go against Ross at all. No, yeah. absolutely not. No, you've done it. Own it. Go for it. <laughs> What well, about uh, Leicester City versus Burnley? Oh, God, that's a really hard one. Because they haven't, they haven't started, have they? Leicester. Yeah. Luckily, really. No, yeah, they, haven't. they haven't really. Didn't they lose last week? Yeah, Vardy. Yeah, Brighton. Vardy ain't They're got nothing yet, has he? No. Properly. I think it don't look like it's really, really, they've really found themselves yet. Um, yeah, they lost 2-1 to Brighton. Yeah. yeah. But, they were unlucky, though. Very, 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 very unlucky. These are the and these are the sort of games that Burnley win, aren't they? You know, yeah, the yeah, they love they, the games they love. They yeah. sort of seem to pounce on anyone that's a little bit vulnerable, don't they? You know, you yeah. look and you think, oh, they won't win that. Yeah, 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 they yeah, beat them, like, yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good point. I'm gonna go. I want Leicester to win. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for Burnley. Go two one Burnley. Two one to Burnley. Okay. I like Brendan Rodgers and I like Leicester, but yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. You think they get you while you're down, Burnley, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Sort of they get their points from somewhere, don't they? Exactly. I think I'm going to go for a draw. I, think I was Ross, thinking a draw as well. I think, I think Ross is right. You know, Burnley are just that tight to do that. But, you know, hopefully Leicester for them will get more luck than they did last time. So I'm going to go for um 2-2 two, two draw. Okay. I'm going to go yeah. Um, I'm going to go one all. Okay. I'm going to go for a 1-1 one, one draw. Okay. What are they saying in the comments? Now saying a 2-1 um, to the Foxes. Okay. Uh, Dini saying 1-0 to Leicester. 
and I'm predicting for the um, Everton game. We ain't got there yet. 2-1 Leicester. Mm. Is anyone saying Burnley though? Uh, no. No. Guys, okay. get your um, predictions in as well. Join us. What are we saying about Everton versus Norwich? I mean, can Norwich yeah. get a win? They can. Against but Everton? They can, but I don't think it would be tomorrow. I think it would be one nil Burnley. There you go. Imperative oh, well. views going one nil Burnley. So someone's signing with you. Sorry, Leicester City. Three nil. Oh, a showcase going for three nil Burnley. Oh, I don't know about that. Yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> you know, we 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 could have beat Burnley three nil, but we didn't. So we were just lucky. We were just happy to get that one nil. Yeah, exactly. So, I think with the Everton one, mm. I'm gonna go three nil Everton. Right now. That sounds about right. Yeah. Unfortunately, well, you know, the, big, the funny thing is, I'm gonna actually head, uh, head, 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 shoulders, whatever. Say, agree with Ross. Because the thing is, and the funny thing is, I, I, the funny thing is, I think he's taking a shine to you, Ross. <laughs> I can do not, man. Look at, look at this knowledge, and and only exactly. the knowledge as well. The beautiful children and nothing. I know. Ross got his children here. That's a no thing. Very, very well, very well behaved as well. Wow. I know. They've been outstanding. You know, very, very, very impressed. And also the fact that he could name song titles as well—it's just it's amazing. <laughs> Not on purpose. I'm going to pass him a drink now. You've uh, now you've announced that. Um, it's amazing. So, yeah, I, I, I want the thing. I want Norwich to win. I've just... done that on purpose. So yeah, no, no. But well, years ago there was a thing in one of the World Cups, weren't there, where the uh, England players were doing their interviews and they were shoehorning names of songs. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> was that oh, yeah, like right the end. It was like the Beckham Shearer. <laughs> oh, that's that brilliant! Sort of <laughs> and they were doing their interviews. What that be ninety eight? Sound about right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And they were doing their interviews. Yeah, I've been like Billy really Manager, and every time they were doing it, they were just trying to drop like. A, oh, that's brilliant! Like, so, oh, that's fantastic. I would have been in his element. <laughs> I would have been. I would have been. Yeah, I want. I want Norwich to win, but I just yeah, can't I, do. See I, like, I really like I know, Norwich. I love the way they win. go about things and what they yeah. do, but. I want them to win. I want to say it, but I just can't see them getting anything. Yeah, and I would say three nil, three nil to um, just like Ross. Everton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just can't see Norwich getting anything. You know? Everyone in here is saying um, an Everton win as yeah, well. Yeah, what do you I'm say? What also going to agree with that. I'm going to go. Um, yeah, two nil Everton. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, sorry Norwich. I can't I mean, really. Like to see I would love to see Norwich. Yeah. Fight, Score, win, and escape, but I just can't see it. Yeah, me neither. I just can't see it. What are we saying about Leeds versus West Ham? <laughs> Boy, isn't they West wow. Ham at the moment? Wow, I know. Wow, 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 wow. It's incredible. This is. A... I've got a feeling though. This could be like the type of game where. It's a really hard one because hard I think one. Leeds, like the way that Leeds play. They they want the game to be open. Yeah, they so do. Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, so they do. Dynamic. They do. And I think they West Ham are really good on the counter attack. They are. If they've got Antonio back on. Yeah, he's not, back. I he think he's back because he had one game back, isn't he? Yeah. So that make a big difference to him. It will massive difference. Yeah. Massive Huge. difference. Uh, I'm gonna go one all. Ah, okay. Yeah, one all. Can't call that one. I, like. tie, I, I mean, before you um, give your score prediction, yeah. Dini saying tie. Name a song by Mary J. Blige and George Michael. Well, it wasn't their song. It was um, it was actually a cover version of I think it's um, as Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder originally done it, yeah. <laughs> but but they done a cover version of that. Okay. So the funny thing is, is that it's a great question, but he's actually giving it away because. It's a cover version song. A cover version. And mate. it wasn't their song. It wasn't their song. It was Stevie Wonder's song. Do you want to sing it, Ty? Uh, I can't. Like I said. <laughs> I'm still if... trying to get you to sing. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Ross can probably do that. Can... No, not a chance. I know the words, but I ain't in the game now. You might end up in singing now in music. <laughs> no, no, no. I can tell you right now. I ain't in the game singing. He can do anything else. So, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, I'm going to go one all. Yeah, I'm going to go one all. I'm going to go one all. Exactly. A man of many talents. I can tell you right now. Many, many talents. Many talents. I would think it's. Yeah, I, I, you know what? I was thinking West Ham going to win, but I, I got to agree with Ross. I think both attacking teams, and I think they're going to cancel each other. Yeah, I think I think it'd be a draw. I do. I, I think I'll go for a possibly an entertaining three-three draw. Oh, oh okay, yes. Two goals. <laughs> like it. A lot thank of people you, are going you. for a West Ham win. Okay. Um, Indra's actually going for a draw as well. One-all yeah. draw. Yeah. Um. Wow, you're expecting some goals in this game. Yeah, because 
like um, Ross said, these lads play football. West Ham are good in counter-attack. So if they clash, it's going to be a classic. Mm. Do you it's know what? Seeing as Ross has gone three three, you've gone one one. I'm no, going I've gone, two, I've two. Gone, no, I've gone three three. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, sorry, one. the other way round. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go two two. Watford versus Newcastle. Ooh. That's yeah, looking I'm like fine. another draw, ain't it? Sure or possibly watching this one. <laughs> <laughs> possibly a Watford win, even. Possibly, it's hard. It's hard to. It's, hard. it's another hard one. So where is it? Is it Watford Newcastle? Yeah, is that Watford. Yeah. yeah. I'm getting a 2 1 shout behind <laughs> the camera over there. Oh, are you? Okay. You're going 2 1 to Watford. Is it 2 1 to Watford or Newcastle? Two, one okay. To Watford, then. Okay. If I get it wrong, you know, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I feel like this could be a draw as well. I think, did Watford, did Watford lose their last game? No, yeah, Watford they... won, didn't they? Yeah, Watford beat. Uh, Norwich. Yeah. Oh, right. They lost in the cup, though, didn't they? To Stoke. Yeah. Uh, Norwich yeah. was actually at home. Watford beat them 3 1. 3 1. That's right. That's right. And Newcastle. I think Newcastle uh, lost it. Who did? Uh, no, they, they had, did. yeah, they had Leeds and they had a 1 all draw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't, I'll, I'll go for a Newcastle win. Simply for the fact of young Jose, our ex player. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'm hoping that he can he'll score. <laughs> he'll score and Newcastle will win 1 0. Hopefully. Okay, so Ty's going for one nil. Newcastle. Newcastle I don't think there'll be much in it. What about you? Oh, what for Newcastle? Oh, I'm, th I'm thinking this might be a draw. Mm. What are the comments saying? Uh, Deanie's going for a one nil Watford. Of course, a showcase uh, going two one Watford. Uh, Dan Smith is going one nil Watford. One nil Watford says Brad the lad. Mm. Um, Nikki Theo's going three two to Watford. Mm. 3-1, I'm assuming that's 3-1 to Watford. Oh, it's looking like it's in favour of Watford. Mm. Oh, do you know, I'm going to second Ross. I'm going 2-1 Watford. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I reckon Watford might get it. Well, like I said, it's hard to go against Ross. So, you know. Exactly. You might be looking back on this uh, next <laughs> week going, oh, my God, what are we listening to him for? Oh. <laughs> Terrible predictions. Maybe, maybe not Ross. I don't know. I don't think, I don't think so. I don't think so, but. Is that it? Uh, no, we've got Brentford versus Liverpool as well. I oh feel like gosh. Brentford Ooh. are really going to make a statement like in Brentford. this game. I really like Brentford. I like what the club's about. <laughs> I like where they've come from, where they've done it. I, yeah. I, mean, I just love everything the story about, um, of everything that they've done. Um, the way they develop players as well. Yeah, brilliant. Isn't it? Amazing. Yeah, so, so, and in, like, yeah, invest in young players, don't they, really? And, and it's, it's, I think it's a brilliant story where they've it got is. to. It is. Um, God, it's a tall order, that, though, it? it is a very tall order. Shall I go first on this go one? On, go for it. I think you got one up your sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> She's ready, isn't she? She's ready. Oh, I'm going to go for a two-all draw. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I reckon, yeah, I reckon they're both sides will score. Yeah. Really? I mean... Well, that's interesting. Obviously, when you look at, you know, Liverpool's front three. Yeah. Unbelievable. Um, and then you still got Trent Alexander Arnold, you know, who he can started great, and then exactly. Really started really well. And then you look at Brentford. I mean, Ivan Tony, even though he gave us a bit of cheek, yeah, really? which is yeah, which is quite disappointing. Exactly. And like Ross said, it's, it's, it's a brilliant Brentford story, but to it me, is. that those comments, are, I just wonder if that's actually sanctioned by the club because I can't see the way Thomas Frank is. I don't see Thomas Frank dissing anybody. So I don't know if that was a, a interview that's not sanctioned by the club. Because that can happen, can't it? When yeah, players do yeah, without interviews that, without the yeah. club's knowledge. I think nowadays even more so. You know, yeah, exactly. You know, you know, so that that's that that is disappointing to hear. Do you that. think that's like a message from him saying, well, you know, Arsenal I'm there if you want me. You want well, me the striker. Because yeah, we possibly. were sort of calling uh, yeah apparently yeah but possibly yeah, put but, himself on the map as well. Yeah, yeah exactly but, no stranger things have happened. <laughs> no, it's true, but I think there's better. Oh, true, Spanish Bunny. Even I'm coming up with them now. Yeah, it's because I'm next to Ross, isn't it? <laughs> really, I'm off, mate. <laughs> thank you, thank you. But uh, yeah, but even still, I think there was he could have done it in a better way. So that 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 to me is very disappointing because I've not seen anything bad about Brentford since that. You know, so that's the. I mean, yeah, that's I'm the only seen, thing. You know, it's yeah, disappointing. Yeah. It's disappointing. Yeah, the context could have been done better. Exactly. Right? You know, it's very. Exactly. That, I'm I'm very disappointed by that. Very disappointed, but you say that you say it's two two. The thing is, 
Yeah, you say that, but I just I can't bet against it. I cannot see Liverpool not winning. I just can't because you said you mentioned Ivor Tony, who's fantastic, but the front three, Salah, for and um, Firmino, Mane, Mane, even Firmino's not even fit, and then they got a job as well. So, uh, yeah, I just exactly. can't see Liverpool not winning. I I'm just can't. Go three two Liverpool. Okay, okay. three okay. two to Liverpool. And I'll go. I'll go. I'll go two 0 Liverpool. Okay. I just can't see Liverpool not winning as much as I would like Brentford to get something. You know, I just can't see Liverpool not winning. Did you say 2 0, sorry? Yeah, yeah. Two nil, sorry. yeah. So what you said? You said 2 2. I'm going to go for a 2 all draw. Okay. On this one. Okay. All right. Southampton versus Wolves. Ooh. Wow. This is interesting. Wolves seem like they're struggling a bit, ain't they? They do. Um, what was so? Oh, they actually lost two nil to Brentford last week. Um, and Brentford had a red card as well. Had a play. That's right. That's right. That's right. But Southampton, they must. They'll. They'll be flying in the fact they do nil and nil with Manchester. City. So can you imagine the confidence that that I gave them exactly to go into the a game like that? He's really, really good. That's a good way. Yeah. 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 No, he is. He is. He is. I'm gonna good. go one nil Southampton. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Are you seconding that? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. No, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not arguing with Ross in this one. Yeah, I'm, I am. Yeah, I am because I think you know. I can't. I can't see South the, the way they set up oh, against Man City to get a nil nil draw. I can't see them conceding. So if they if they were to score, I think they're going to win. So yeah. Yeah, likewise. So what do you say then? Do you know what? Yeah. <laughs> You're going to go no. to three. We'll no, see. I'm going to agree with Ross and okay. you as well. well I'm going to go for a 1-0 well, Southampton well, win as well. Listen, you're, you're agreeing with Ross. I'm only, I'm only tagging along. Ross is the one that's... We're trying to get some um, expert... I'm um... leading you astray, yeah? <laughs> you're not, no, no. You're not, you're, you're, you're not Ross. You're, you're leading on us down the lobby. In the right off. direction. Oh, exactly. In the right direction. Yeah, that's right, that's right. <sighs> so, no, that's cool. No. Dan yeah, Smith yeah. is going for a one all. Okay. 2-0... To Southampton to Brad the Lad, 1 0 mm. to Wolves, uh, 2 1 um, the Saints, Armstrong yeah. and Prowsey, oh, right. 3 2 Southampton, <laughs> uh, Wolves, a showcase going for a Wolves win of 2 1. Okay. Uh, Matt is going 3 0 to Ivan Tony. So, what? Yeah, Ivan what Tony to get a hat trick. Boy, that would be that would be incredible, mate. Story, that yeah. will be some levels. But even if he gets, then hat- we'll get some more cheeky yeah, comments yeah, from him, won't we? Even even, even if I'm a Tony got hat trick, Liverpool still score four. Yeah, so, <laughs> score more. You know, I can't see that happening. I think the last player to score a hat trick at Anfield was I think Peter Peter Love. Peter and Love. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the last. Oh, yeah, was the last that? player. I, I, I can't even remember the year, but I know he's a, and he and he did it, and that was 26 years since he did it. So. Who knows, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Peter Will Ivan the last Tony one. be making history? Um, last yeah, picture. Crystal Palace versus Brighton. Oh, that oh, is a, a big derby. game. Now, yeah. oh a big game. You forget how like, it's a big yes, game. Yes, yes. Yes. Big oh. game. At Palace. Yep. Oh, my gosh. That is mad. That's mad. That's mad in football terms. That's, that, that's a big <laughs> game. Is it live? Is it live? Mope. Oh, yeah. I hope you get relegated. <laughs> well, I hope he scores. I'm gonna go two one, two one Palace. Two one to Palace. Well, yeah, I like uh, Brighton, but uh, yeah, Palace at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I get the yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm gonna go for two nil Crystal Palace. Yeah, you know, Ty's not a, a massive Brighton. Well, no, no, the thing is, it's not. It's nothing to do with Brighton. It's to do with Mopey's comments. <laughs> Ridiculous, arrogant, calling us arrogant, and we deserve. <sighs> I, I I'm I'm not fond of I'm not fond of um disrespect shown like that. I think it's very, 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 very smug and not needed. Not needed in the game, you know. In the game it, well, the thing is, like Ross was saying, in, in in if if life if football imitates um life, then why can't football be respectful then? Exactly. <laughs> you know, it's true. You know, so I'm not I a fan of that. that. But apart from that, I don't I have no problem with Brighton. It's not a nice era. Very nice era. But yeah, Patrick. Our legend Vieira. Gonna get the two nil. His first, his first dart, his first derby win. I was gonna say, I hope Mope gets sent off. But I don't, wanna, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to be. I don't know what's the, what's the, what's the word? When, Negative. No, no. You know the word when you're thing. Petty. I don't want to be petty like him. So okay. I just go Big for a Brighton win. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, Crystal Palace win. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah. Try to be Ross. Try to be. All right. He's, he's got everything. I know. Everything. Uh, what, what do you say, Charlie? For me, I'm gonna go. 
you know, I'm going to second Russ on this one. <laughs> you so I think Crystal Palace will win, but yeah. I also think Brighton will score as well. Okay. So I'm going to go for a 2-1. I was uh, well, I was well. Okay. Okay. All right. Is that, is that live, do you know, Charlie? Uh, I'm not sure. That's, that's uh, a big me... game. Like you said, Russ, a big derby game, isn't it? Very big. Yeah. Oh, that one's actually uh, a Monday night game. Oh, right. So he's liked it. Yeah. Watch that. That's going to be fascinating. That's going to be very fascinating. Is that the last one? That is the last fixture. A showcase going 2-1 okay. Brighton. Uh, Niles going for a one-all draw. Okay. Uh, Deanie's going for a four-all draw. Oh, wow. And Mike is saying, Mope is a cheat and I hope he gets relegated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Measure. Well, that brings us to the end of the show. Wow. Oh, wow. Ross, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, having you. No, thank you. And, very much. yeah, sharing everything oh, with us. It. It's been great. Yeah, yeah, it's been, been lovely really having you here. So thank you so much. Thank you to Ty as well for joining thank us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you to Ross. Yeah, thank nice you to, to meet you, mate. Thank you very much to his lovely, beautiful children I as well. Know. Shout out to Ross's kids who have been so patient in the background. Absolutely. And even giving McDonald's. Oh yeah, they're ready for their macaroni <laughs> now. And, and even giving predictions as well. I know That's exactly. Massive, Getting involved. Massive. And very, very thank nice. you, everyone, for thank joining you, us. We Absolutely. hope that you've enjoyed tonight's show. If you have, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Um, I'll put Ross and uh, Ty's Instagrams. I'm sorry, no, Ross, you said you're private. No, no, if, yeah, it's on there. Yeah. Yep. But, yeah. It, okay, I'll I put don't, there. I don't um, let many people in. <laughs> <laughs> Which is you got lucky to be selected. Absolutely. Um, but <laughs> we'll be back again next week, Friday, with another show and more guests. So we'll see you then. Bye Peace. for now.